game going inside to the big man. He doesn't have a big man this year, and so he's going to a run-and-gun type of game, which is completely contrary to his thinking. Ron Blomberg, on the other hand, likes to run. He likes to play aggressive, likes to play man-to-man, -man, but because of the size and the lack of quickness, he'll be playing more of a slow down, looking inside, and possibly playing all zone. So it shows you that the high school coach, he has to look in November and see what he has and then adjust to them. The college can, coach can go out and recruit the type of boy that he wants. The pro coach can draft the type of uh, player he wants. But the high school coach has to be able to coach all types of offenses and defense. And that's what I think we're going to see tonight. And they're both fine coaches, and I'm sure it'll be a good basketball game. Looking forward to it. Okay, Jerry, thank you very much. We'll be back with the start of tonight's game in just a moment. Hamilton High School in Sussex, Wisconsin. Sports 36 brings you the Braveland Conference game between the Brookfield Central Lancers and the Sussex Hamilton Chargers. All right, everybody, we're here at Hamilton High School on a cold night. We're ready to bring you this game between two of the better teams in the Braveland Conference. Jerry Sullivan, I think we're in for a good one. Both of these teams are considered to be contenders. I think the Braveland Conference is very well balanced this year. Homestead's got the big center back, but Brookfield East, Brookfield Central, and uh, Sussex Hamilton, I think, will be right in the running. All right, looking at the standings so far in the Braveland Conference, coming into tonight's game, Brookfield East, Brown Deer, Cedarburg, Homestead, and Sussex Hamilton are all tied for first place. They've all played only one game, and they've won that game. Teams in second place, obviously, Brookfield Central, the team you'll be seeing tonight, Menominee Falls East, Falls North, Nicolay, and Port Washington. So far, the scoring leader this year is Niesel from Cedarburg, who's averaging 23 points a game. The fifth leading scorer so far this year is Dan O'Rourke from Sussex Hamilton. He chimed in 20 points in this last game. And uh, his teammate, Terry Youngbauer, has hit for a 16 in that first game. So some good scoring. Head coach Rich, Lutka, Rich Lutka said they would pick up uh, 80 points or better for every game, and they're holding that pretty good so far. Let's move now to our public address announcer, Alex Dietrich. The starting lineups for both teams, starting at a guard for Brookfield Central, number 34, Russell Gregg. Guard for the Hamilton Chargers, number 12, Tim Patterson. At a guard for Brookfield, number 12, Michael Leary. At a guard for the Chargers, number 14, Terry Youngbauer. At a forward for Brookfield, number 52, Frank Schaefer. At a forward for the Chargers, number 22, Dan O'Rourke. At a forward for the Lancers, number 42, Mark Sorensen. At a forward for the Chargers, number 44, Paul Tottner. At center for the Lancers, number 54, Don Kent. And at center for the Chargers, number 42, Jeff Kronberg. Head coach for the Lancers, Ron Blomberg. For the Chargers, Rich Lipka. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Sussex Hamilton High School, our national anthem.
The Charger band from Sussex Hamilton High School were all set for this game. Referee, you see, is Dick Wusso. The other referee, Lee Johnson, jumping at center. For Brookfield Central, number 52 is Frank Schaefer. He's 6'4", 180. The other center jumping, number 44, Paul Tobner. He's a forward, 6'2", 173, a junior. So we're all set for this game, Jerry. You know, there's a lot of big boys out there. I don't see too many small ones, John. Well, Sussex Hamilton coach Rich, Lut Rich Lutka said they didn't have too much height on this team, but they look pretty tall to me. When you start 6'1", 6'1", 6'3", 6'3", and 6'4", that's not a small team. All right, pass down on an eighth, and they find a man open real quick down there. Number Brookfield Central, Central has come out in the zone. I'm sure they're concerned about the quickness of Hamilton. With the ball turning around, Schaefer, uh-uh. Own rebound down there. Is, put it in, Don Kent. Kent, the tallest man on this Brookfield Central squad. We have a deuce affair here. Two to two from the Hamilton High School. Shot from the outside, Tim Patterson. No good. Battle for underneath. Ball is up. No basket, but a foul. We've got a foul on number 54, Don Kent. Sussex Hamilton was able to get on the board first, Jerry. And they're well, it's a 1-3-1 one, one zone, John, and they, that baseline is left open. They got one man roaming it, and Sus Kent wasn't able to get over there quick enough. But that's what happens against that 1-3-1. Bowser one. number 54, Don Kent, now on the free throw line. Number 22, Dan O'Rourke. He's 6'3", 185, and as we said, he's the fifth leading scorer in the Braveland Conference. Hit for 20 points in that last game. That's the game in which they beat Falls East, 85-67. Quickly up the floor, Mike O'Leary, pass over to one side, Mark Sorensen, battling for again. We're going to have a foul. This foul is going to be on number 34, Westway. Now, foul trouble. Going to hurt Brookfield Central if they keep this up. You know, in the, in the game against Brookfield East, they had 30 falls. They fouled, I think, three players out, so that really hurt them. Back to live action now. Up and high. 14, Young Bauer. 12 is Patterson. In the corner, 22 is Dan O'Rourke. Back outside of Young Bauer. The two guards like to shoot it. Young Bauer and Patterson. Shot from the outside. O'Rourke. Uh-uh. Rebound. Down to Gray. They'll clear it out. Here come the Lancers from Brookfield Central. 1-3 record, but don't let that deceive you. They've got a pretty good team and an excellent coach in Ron Blomberg. Pass underneath, Ross finally picked up, Patterson. Battle for the board again. Loose underneath, controlled by Sussex. Finally cleared by Russ Gray. Brookfield Central does like to run the three-lane fast break, but they're not quite as quick enough to, to run it the way Coach Lombard would like them to. Outside O'Leary, looking to Russ Gray, 34. Man is open underneath down there. That was Sorensen, but... They'll just have to peel off. They're not controlling that offensive board. They're getting the shots, but they're not putting them good and following it up. On the drive, good move down deep by number 22, Dan O'Rourke. O'Rourke got the base, or he got the seam that time and slipped in between the wingman and the middleman. Got the bucket. Central coach Blomberg says he has a good team, good height. But the one thing he's worried about is a little quickness. And watch right here where his one of his players gets beat as Dan O'Rourke goes in I, for the drive. You notice there, John, he just split those two players. they got to take away that seam to prevent that man from getting in. Once he penetrates like that, it's an easy two points. For O'Rourke, that was his fourth point. O'Rourke's a 61% shooter on, from the field so far this season, so he can put the ball in the basket. They're not getting an easy shot so far. Lancers, good defense put on by the Chargers of Sussex Hamilton. Their defense. Michael Leary being harassed out there. Dangerous pass through the top of the lane. Still under pressure. Got a man open in the middle. Schaefer. Up player. He, uh, he handles himself well. He's got those long arms. He's lean. And he's a nice looking player. I'll tell you, when you've got height like that, you have to use it. If you don't, you're just wasting it. Underneath, difficult shot. Battle still going on underneath. Tapped away, but controlled by the Chargers. Underneath, Young Power. He's going to be fouling the way up. The foul is going to be on. Number 54, Don Kent. And for Kent, his second personal foul. Right now, John uh, Sussex is just out hustling him on the board. Kent's in foul trouble now. He's got two. We're only in the first period. Watch him go up. 
a good move by an offensive player. It's a, it's a difficult call to make. Uh, it could almost be called an offensive foul because the man is jumping into him, but the defense, if he makes the commitment to block it, it's going to be called on him. But it's a tough call for the official. Terry Youngbar did a fine job for the Sussex Hamilton team last year. Looks for a second free throw and cancels it. Score is now 8-4. to four. Hamilton leading Brookfield Central. Full court pressure put on. They take a lot of pride in that man-to-man -man pressure. They overplay and they make you work. Now they're not giving an inch. Schaefer put it up from outside. And 10, good. Frank Schaefer now with four points. And it's 8-6, to six, Sussex. From the outside, pull up short. Good by O'Rourke. O'Rourke's got the hot hand. He's got six points. Hamilton doesn't waste any time getting it up the floor, and that's what Coach Lecto was talking about when he said he wants to get about 80 points a game. Here's a stolen on the inbound. Bow again coming up. This one's going to be on number 42, Mark Sorensen. I tell you, that full court pressure is doing it. At that time, they were looking down deep. Nobody was coming back to help. And when they, someone finally did come in back to help, now his defensive man was right on top of him, plucked it right away. They got a little careless with that pass. When you throw it in the middle like that, that great a distance, the middle pass has to be a shorter, more crisp pass. We've got a timeout on the floor, 10 to 6, Sussex Hamilton leading Brookfield Central. Watch this last foul again, driving on the blade. Now you watch this pass, John. It's a, it's a long pass, and it hangs up there, and you can see Sussex gets a hand in there, and it's, when those passes hang like that, they're anybody's uh, it's fair game then. This kid Youngbar, number 14, is showing how he can control himself in the lane. He knows where the basket is and goes right to it. He's a good athlete. He was an all-conference quarterback in football, and he played it well. He was second-team all-conference last year in basketball, so he's a fine athlete. Nice size guard, too, six you know, foot one. Also shot 49 percent. Is in the top ten of the conference in scoring. Ninth best scorer so far this year in the league with 16 points in that first game against Falls East. In the three games that they've played so far, he's, he's shooting at 63% from the field, and that's just phenomenal. We've got 428 left in the first period of action, and it's Sussex Hamilton leading 10-6. to six. Pretty good crowd here tonight. You're looking at the Sussex Hamilton crowd. They're a little team right now, a little quiet. Of course, the free throw shooter on the line. And that again is Terry Youngbar. Good free throw shooter. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because he just missed that one. <laughs> he must have listened to you. To tighten him up, John. Young Power, six foot two, 160 senior, makes the second one. Now 11 to six. Sussex Hamilton. Look at this pressure. We're gonna have a foul charging right down on top of Patterson. Michael Leary's a tough little guard. I watched him the other night against uh, Franklin in an unconference game, and he takes control of things. He's a little, he's a little fellow, but he takes control. He's a good leader. Well, Leary only 5'8", 150. He's the kind of guy you like to have on your team, though. Ron Blomberg knows what he likes. Former administrative assistant for the Milwaukee Bucks. He was coach at Brookfield Central. 1955 when the school opened all the way to 66. And now back again after a, about a 12-year respite. When they opened up in 55, they only had freshmen and sophomores. They weren't even a four-year school at that time. Look at Young Bar go all the way down, and Schaefer makes him eat the leather for two tonight. That was a nice defensive play by Schaefer. And Central now trying to look, gather themselves together. They find themselves down by five, 11 to six, 3.51 now to go in the first period. Looking deep, they've got a man down there. 22 is Sorensen, puts it up and good. Sorensen's been a starter for three years at Brookfield Central. His father is the athletic director over at Brookfield East. There's a mental mistake. Sorensen lost it. We got a man going down. Good defensive play. And it's not a foul. It's not a foul. It was a good offensive play, and he just waited too long. That's, that's just great hustle by uh, Tobner. He he saved two points there. Russ Gregg moving right across, but he had the ball blocked on him. Watch it right here. Really some good hustle. He came, he came out of nowhere and got a piece of it. That's all you need. End of the game now for Sussex Hamilton High School. Number 34 is Wayne Battle. He's a 6'1", 171 junior. He moved here from New York in the last year, and Rich Luck is happy he's here because he's a good ball player. Good off the bench. He's their second Schaefer. best rebounder. And there's a good he, example. He just picked he just up. got one. There's Battle with the ball. Battle has a little problem with defense, as Luck has said. Good offensive player. Once he starts playing better defense, he'll play more. Again, only a junior. Ah, we got traveling call down deep on O'Rourke. Try to go low, try to pick up the foul, but he was called for walking. 
this is a, this is a good defensive play by the uh, baseline. Well, I think we got an offensive player control foul. And number 12, Michael Leary. You know, when you see this type of play where the defensive man is jumping in front, you can see that they're well coached defensively. They're drawing the charge, the play before down on the baseline. The Brookfield player just took away the driving lane, and that's good defense when you see that type of fundamental play. 3-14, first period in this game between Sussex Hamilton High School and Brookfield Central. A shot from the corner. No good out there by a one. Here's a nice Here fast come. break. Greg's going to put it in this time. You can tell. He got cheated on the last one when he got the ball blocked on him. And look at Central. They're leeching for the ball. O'Rourke is all over the court. And they're starting to catch up. Central's only down by one, 11 to 10. Watch this last one again. Watch Greg go down. You notice how all three lanes fill out on that Brookfield Central fast break. They kick it out to the side and get it in the middle and fill out those three lanes. Well, we'll try to pick that up in just a moment. We're on live action now. We want to catch it as long as we can. Underneath, good battle down deep. O'Rourke was up for it. Finally tapped in. And I think they're going to have to turn that one to O'Rourke. For O'Rourke, eight points now. Leading score for Sussex Hamilton. The Chargers up 13-10. We're looking deep to Sorensen. Sorensen down. We're going to have a foul off the ball. This foul on Frank Schaefer, number 52. For Frank Schaefer, foul number one. Here you can see the three lanes coming down the side and using a good left hand. All three lanes were filled out. The middle man was ready to take the rebound. Young Bar had to fall back on that one. Couldn't take the foul. Not in position to block the ball. Another mistake right there. And picking it up, here comes the central answer. Greg, Ooh. way out of position on that shot. Probably should not have taken that. Sussex Hamilton shooting away this time. Battle couldn't catch up to it. Pass over thrown. That was a poor shot selection. And uh, Greg, Russ Greg just shouldn't have threw that one up there. He was off balance, and he probably just should have pulled up and waited for the trailer man. 2.09 remaining. First period of action. Schaefer will inbound. Down deep his own side. Try to get it in. He's over the line. That's the indication from the referee, Lee Johnson. So we they, it will be Chargers. On that uh, violation, John, when they, it's a violation, they have to stay right at the spot. He moved down the line a little bit, and that was the violation, moving down the line. All right, so not over the line, and got to watch that. 13 to 10. The Chargers of Sussex Hamilton leading Brookfield Central. Right of work at battle. has got a good shot. Can't hit it this time. Good that, rebound by Sorensen. On that 1-3-1 one, one zone that Brookfield is playing, it's, uh, it's tough to get a good shot. Looking for the open man. Down eight is Kent. Don Kent has four. The big play there had to be Michael O'Leary. He's fine pass. He saw the open man and got it through there. Those little guards are valuable. Young Bauer springs free from one man. Puts it down. That's an awful good shot for him. He likes that little 12, 15 footer. Now whistle again. We've got a foul. I believe this one's on uh, Young Bauer. Yep. He was first personal foul. He was attempting to get in front of him, but he couldn't quite make the, uh, the proper move. Young Bauer, his first person in the game. Let's watch this last one. Now, they look down Good deep. Good pass. Great pass by O'Leary. Calling Kent, the open man. Kent was there. 15 to 12 now. Charges in the lead, but a fall away jumper by number 34, Russ Gregg. So look out, we're up to a, only a one point lead now for the Chargers. Gregg has been 14. looking good. Russ Gregg has been looking good this quarter, John. He's, he's getting out and running on the fast break. He's hitting a little short jump shot. Another player in the game for Hamilton, number 10 is Tom Smith in replace of uh, Patterson, number 12. So two substitutions are running, four Chargers. That was, that was a bad fall. Uh, Russ Craig just uh, went into the man. He, he didn't uh, have good foot movement on it. He just charged right into him. But he's hustling, and those kind of falls a coach really can't get upset with. And for Greg, his second personal foul. A couple of new players into the game now. 42, Jeff Cronenberg is back in for Hamilton. Also into the game, the new player is number 14, Woody Monegro, the only sophomore in the game tonight. He's 5'11", 135. That's an interesting substitution. He put the smallest man on the court in, took the biggest man out. Kent went out, and Mango came in. I think they want to run a little bit more. Sussex Hamilton playing their running game. They have to get their man free. On the, re on the uh, free throw, no good that time by Topner. Looking deep. Monego's open. Not this time. Gets up his own rebound. They'll try to set it up. 
Guided by Battle. Working out high. Now looking deep. Schaefer finds a man open. Nice using of the glass that time. Mark Sorensen hits. He's got four. And for the first time tonight, Central's in the lead. A foul coming up. Battle down the lane was fouled. Let's pick it up. Who was this one on? Oh, they're going to say it was an offensive foul. It's offensive foul on Wayne Battle. There's a nice assist by Schaefer. He saw the open man down below. Sorensen got it, powered it up there. Probably could have been called for a fall. Uh, O'Rourke may have been called, but they let her go. Central trying to get that ball off the court quickly. Pulling up short. Craig comes off. Two men fighting it from the same team. Finally, they pull it down. Young Bauer coming up left side. 34 seconds remaining in the first period. We get a foul this time. It's an offensive foul. There again, now Schaefer did a good job. He took away the baseline, and he had no place to go. Good defensive play. Fouls on number 44, Paul Taubner. Watch as he moves in on the picture right here. He gets set up. Good play. There's no place to go. Good defense. Back to action, 16-15. Central's Lancers are up by one. Good move. Nice move down the lane, and good by Mike O'Leary. And Mike O'Leary with two points now. 18-15, the Lancers coming up. They're what to pick one of the, to be one of the contenders in the Braveland Conference this year. They're only one of the conference so far. They lost to Brookfield East, but now they're starting to play some ball, it looks like. It's a good move. He got the in, he got the step, saw the lane, went in. Good body balance. Excellent move by Michael Leary. Ten seconds remaining on the first period of action. O'Leary, ball control, looking deep for someone. Got to get the ball up. Four seconds now. Three seconds. Man and Renee Sorensen with a foul. He's going to be fouled. for behind by Cronenberg. You know, Sorensen worked very hard for that foul. He, look how he gets it inside. He knew he didn't have the shot. And yet he, he maneuvered, brought the ball back. His body was protecting the ball. Good maneuver. Now Cronenberg was saying, who me? Well, we saw his arm on his back. So going to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Mark Sorensen, he has four points so far. Sorensen, a 6'3", 185 senior forward. Now good on the first attempt. We get one more. One second remaining in the first period. You know, the Sorensen boys' father coached for many years in Brookfield. He's now the athletic director at Brookfield East. Don Kent, the father of Donnie Kent, uh, was an outstanding player. At Ball came up high. Not enough time for Sussex Hamilton to put up another one. So that's the score at the end of one period of play. It's Brookfield Central 18, Sussex Hamilton 15. See what's coming up on Sports 36 next week. Oh, Jerry, you and I are going to be out in New Berlin Eisenhower next week. That should be a real inner city rivalry. New Berlin Eisenhower, New Berlin West. They'll be a West is number one in the Parkland Conference so far. And I'll tell you, folks, next week we're going to be live out there on Friday night. So if you're going to be at the New Berlin Eisenhower game, you bring your TV sets. We'll put you on TV. We're never ashamed to do that. We did that at the Dominican game last year. You know, the uh, New Berlin community is really wild over their basketball, and they produce some awfully good teams, both at Eisenhower and at West. They've got very active booster clubs, and they take a lot of pride in their program, and they've got excellent coaches. And again, that game will be next Friday night at 8 o'clock. We usually start at Saturday at 7.30. That's when this game started tonight. But 8 o'clock next Friday night, December 15th, it'll be New Berlin West against New Berlin Eisenhower, live from Eisenhower High School. Again, the 15th of December next Friday night. All right, we're all set to start the second period of action. Jumping 52 is Frank Schaefer. He's six foot four. And again, number 44 out there is Paul Tobner. He's six two. You see, the Kent boy, uh, Don Kent, has replaced the little guard, Woody Manigault. So we have basically the starting lineup all back in again for Brookfield Central. All is batted out. Nice move by Kent. Uh, he took a little too much time to shoot this time. Kent, uh, uh, Kent gets up in the air. You know. One thing that that does, it intimidates, and that guy, that boy in the corner is going to have a tough time shooting next time just because he, he ate the leather that time. You better believe a nice move first step that time by Tobner, but I think he's called for traveling. The 1-3-1 uh, the one, one zone has been quite effective. It has Hamilton somewhat confused, and uh, they're not getting the good shot. The corner shot, I don't feel, is a, is a good shot. Well, look at the passing of O'Rourke. Nice move, O'Leary, excuse me. And O'Rourke work, and O'Leary in this game tonight. Got to watch that. Patterson back into the game now for Sussex. Those shot are good shots. You can't, uh, you can't give him that shot. That's, you're facing the basket. You got the board. You got everything going for you there. Dan yeah, O'Rourke in double figures. First play tonight. He's got 10. 18-17 now. Brookfield Central by one. We're in the second period. We're at Hamilton High School tonight on Sports 36. John Bartell, Jerry Sullivan, Terry Peterson, our scorer. 
the defense starting to tighten up a little bit for the Chargers. Turnaround jumper, though, put up and good. You know, I mentioned before, John, Don Kent, uh, his father was an outstanding football player for the Wisconsin Badgers and then went on to play with the Bears back in the 40s. So they come from a good athletic background. Young Bauer brings it for his sixth point of the night. Seventh point, excuse me. And now it's 2019, Brookfield Central, and they're exchanging baskets. Look at the ball handling of O'Leary. He's a clever little ball player. Patterson's keeping him honest out there, though. Playing him nice and tight, not to give him too much room. If he was any closer, he'd be inside of his jersey, I think. Underneath is Kent. Kent with a high one off the glass. No good. Pass down court. They got a man. This is Patterson. Patterson had to pull up short. Second try. No good. Foul's coming up. And this foul is on Kent, number three. That's his third one for the big guy. Tallest player on the floor. He was a little bit slow reacting. He, he didn't get himself turned around. Good follow by Patterson. He missed the shot. A little O'Leary made him think about it, but Kent got him on the second try. Back into the game. Battle number 34. After number 44, Paul Tobner. His coach Rich Lupka rotating his players. Another substitution coming out as Kent number 54. The foot of the small player again. Woody Monego. On the line now, Tim Patterson. First time there tonight. No points yet. Six. 19 remaining in the first half of action. I think that's his first free throw of the year. I know he's had one other free throw attempt. Ah, he ties the score now. 20 all. Central with the ball. This guy's a sophomore, Woody Monego. Luckily, his pass goes right down to Greg, and I find that hard to believe. I don't know if you give him an assist on that. You probably have to give the deflection the assist. <laughs> give the assist to one of the Charger players who had a hand on it right there. Now they're looking down to the corner, going up for the shot. No good out there by O'Rourke. Finally tapped in by Battle. Wayne Battle, two points. As the tie game again, a 22 all. Going one side, going up with the ball, Sorensen, no good. Battle for the rebound, controlled by Schaefer. In trouble, Monego finally gets it out to Sorensen. Looking deep, they've got O'Leary back there. He can shoot it. And I'm impressed with the passes. Now, that was an excellent pass again. Sorensen saw O'Leary on the baseline. It was a tough pass. He got it through there and got the high percentage shot. Now, Coach Ron Blomberg looking for that and coaching that all the time, looking for that teamwork. He needs that, no individualism. There's a basket by O'Rourke. O'Rourke now has 12. I think, I think the uh, Hamilton team is an excellent perimeter shooting team. If they can force them to the corners, they're going to be better off. But if they give them that little shot out in front, they're going to be... I'd say this kid O'Leary is getting that first step on Patterson, getting the, either the pass off or the shot off, and O'Leary has six points. He's a tough little player. I, I really have to admire him. Battle with the ball. Battle trying to drive the lane. Ball's down on the floor. Nothing. Just a good follow out there. Basket was good by number 22, Dan O'Rourke. Sorensen just didn't go into the board. Uh, Central, Central is just uh, on the offensive board down here on, on Hamilton's offensive board. Brookfield is just not blocking out and getting their position. O'Rourke is uh, what you might call a good garbage player. He's going after that free stuff and he's putting it in. 26 all. Let's watch this last one right here as Battle went down the lane. He's already on the floor. And look at right there. Good follow. That's what I kind of mean by garbage. He's around to pick up the loose change, put it in. Battle for the rebound on the tip. And it's last touch by one of the Chargers. It'll be out of bounds to the Lancers. Down deep. We've got 434 remaining in the first half. We've got an excellent quarter and a half of basketball so far, John. Well, I wonder if they can keep up this pace. Coach Lunka says that he wants to score 80 points a game and maybe 104 of his games at least this year. And he wants to go. He wants to run. He feels he's got good perimeter shooters and they can get the ball up down the court, hopefully to get two, three shots before they can get the rebound. Well, they scored 85 against Falls East. They're doing well, pretty well tonight so far. Fall away. Schaefer on the board. Finally pulled down. O'Rourke. Man loose down to Patterson. Pull up short. Another man coming down. Young Bauer. Finger hole is good. That was a good play by Patterson. He looked for the trailer. He didn't have the shot himself, and the trailer came up, and Young Bauer put her in. Looked almost like a set play to me as Young Bauer came creasing down the lane there. Outside Monego. Monego over to Pasco. Nobody moving around right now. Brookfield Central standing around a little bit. Now they're starting to get some action. Schaefer's trying to, trying to move through the middle. 
And O'Leary's finding no one to pass to. Manego jumps it, no good. On the rebound, we're gonna have a jump ball. Good call, I would say, good call. So we're gonna have a jump ball, Schaefer, and watch this last one. Patterson got rid of the ball, O'Leary down the lane. He might have been called for a charging foul. A man had his arms up. Kent, this is uh, the, the play that we just saw, uh, Youngbauer. That's, that's called a secondary break. Patterson goes down to the corner. He doesn't have the shot himself. Youngbauer becomes a secondary break, and he comes in behind. And usually the defense has already come down to the baseline, and it leaves that little shot open. That's exactly what Youngbauer did. Well, that's what the other team did. Here's the outlet pass. You can see Patterson taking it down. He doesn't have the shot. Now here comes Youngbauer, the secondary phase of the break and he catches central off guard. You know, there were two men down there. There was one man down deep. I couldn't catch his number, but I think it was O'Rourke. But he saw he was open, but he saw another Lancer player come up and cover him. He had passed that. That ball might have been lost. Well, we got a timeout. 28-26, Sussex Hamilton leading. And if you're a tennis buff, we invite you to join Channel 36 again tomorrow for live coverage of the 1978 Davis Cup Finals. Tomorrow you'll see the U.S. represented by Arthur Ashe and Vitas Gerolitis play Great Britain in the singles competition. That's exciting Davis Cup action from Palm Springs, California, tomorrow at noon here on Channel 36. 28-26, Sussex Hamilton leads Brookfield Central. And we're at Hamilton tonight, winning the tip. Greg gets the, uh, excuse me, a new player in the lineup, Ken Seidenberg. That, was not a, that just wasn't a good shot. That was a bad shot. That was a nice shot. Patterson up by four goes to Chargers. Philly 26 with 321 left in the half. Greg back to O'Leary. O'Leary. Boy, every time he shot so far, it's just a switch. He's got eight points. Now battle. Battle likes to shoot. Doesn't hit it this time. We have a foul coming up on number 14, Young Ball. Young Ball reaching in that time. I will say this, the uh, central team is not afraid to shoot that perimeter shot. They're, uh, they're firing it up. The Seidenberg threw one up right away. For Young Bauer, his second personal, watch him reach over right there. Over the back. Not a, not a great deal of contact there. I think the official may have had a bad angle. There, there wasn't a great deal of contact looking at the replay. But goes the way they see it. Well, they, they call them pretty well, I think. The uh, the referees, it's, it's, a tough, tough it, it's a tough job, exactly. They have to make a decision. They can't really change it. I don't think everyone can be officials. You have to you have to have a different type of skin. You have to be a little tough skin. On well, the free throw, Mark Sorensen was one for three from the line. Now one for four. This is on the, lead, on the second shot. 30-29 now. Hamilton with the lead. Pass down deep. Youngbauer. Youngbauer might try to shoot it. Does. Nice little turnaround, but controlling on the boards is 32, Brian Seidenberg. O'Leary will hold it up. In the middle, turnaround, Sorensen, good. I think uh, Brookfield is getting some fine movement on their offense. They're moving the ball well, they're hitting the open man, they're getting some good weak side cutting into the middle. Moving around outside, look at the defense by O'Leary. O'Leary keeping him on us down deep. Still in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Nice shot, Patterson. I will say this, uh, Hamilton shoots awfully well from that free throw line extended. Both Young Bauer, Patterson, and O'Rourke, they've got some great perimeter shooters. Well, they've got to do that to bust any type of defense they might have on them. Down deep, Sorensen goes up, it's good. He'll get the extra point. He'll get the basket. Who's the foul on? I believe it's on number 42, Cronenberg. We'll try to get it on the instant replay here and see exactly if that was Cronenberg. I believe it was. This is some nice work. Now, Sorensen, again, worked hard for this basket. He had to do some individual work here. Comes back in, good control, got the bucket. That was a tough shot. He was at a tough angle. They had him force along the baseline. Good well, play by Sorensen. For Jeff Cronenberg, his second personal foul, 33-32. The Lancer is up by one point. On the rebound, Schaefer, oh, the bad angle, came off the side of the board. Defense trying to put on the pressure now with two minutes remaining in the first half. Tottenham back in the lineup also. Shot from the corner, no good by Youngbar. Good on the rebound by number 22, Dan O'Rourke. For O'Rourke, 16 points. Got a fall, though, so we'll be shooting some free throws down on this end. Well, he's going to get the basket. That's a new rule this year. Contact was after the after the shot was made. The shot Just was like in away. college basketball now. He slid in here. Good defensive play by Sorensen. Really knocked somebody down there, didn't he? 
34-33. Hamilton on the lead by one with 153 remaining first time. We're at Hamilton High School tonight on Sports 36. Next week, New Berlin West against New Berlin Eisenhower. And I'm looking forward to that one. We'll be live next Friday night. It'll be a noisy place, I'm sure. New Berlin will be rocking. Sorensen, second free throw. This one's good. Puts his team up by one, 35-34. This is Tim Patterson. Patterson, 6'1", 170. Can shoot. He's did it before. Not this time, though. Rebound comes loose. Sorensen almost tipped once. Put up. That might have been offensive goal or defensive goal interference because the man who's had his hand on the net for a central. But the basket went in, so they'll get it. Now 36-35. Sussex with a one-point lead. They work it down 123. They'll work it around for a good shot. That's a long shot. Foul underneath. Sorensen. Sorensen's. Second first feel, uh, well, the second fouls we see on Sorensen, Jerry, and that time he was just in bad position there. I think uh, Hamilton's a very aggressive rebounding team. Now there, he just pulled it down and, and pulled himself into getting a foul. Got to go right to the ball. They're a very aggressive team. They get a hold of it, they pull it down quickly. And I don't think they're that small a team. You look at their, their size. This is not a small team. I've seen teams that... I sure would like to have one or two of these players. Paul Talbot, they're 0 for 1 from the line so far. Hits this one. Two point votes now for Hamilton. Talbot's first point of the game. Played last year on that uh, good Sussex Hamilton team, which finished second of the conference in the Braveland. Rebound comes to Sorensen. Last year, the Chargers averaged 55 a game. We're going to have a walking, no, foul coming up. Fouls number 32, Ken Seidenberg. Seidenberg is first foul, first personal foul. There's been a lot of contact in the game so far. They've been at the free throw line a number of times. I think two aggressive teams like this, you're going to, and plus some pretty big size, good sized bodies, you're going to get a lot of contact. Now Jeff Cronenberg wins two points, first time in the line tonight. Has a chance to put his team up by a couple more. Uh -uh. I'll tell you who's doing a good job on the board right now is Schaefer for Brookfield Central, keeping him in the game. He's been playing well. Outside, trying to look for a shot. He had a, he was open, but a foul underneath. This one's on Schaefer. So for Frank Schaefer, he picks up the second personal. Well, that must have been a, I didn't see that ball. It must have been away from the ball because he was cutting along the baseline. Evidently, he pushed off somebody, but that was a signal from the ref, and uh, I don't know if we're going to take a look at that one, but uh, well, I would trust that it's uh, his second personal or not. 37-35 now for Sussex. They lead it by two with about 40 seconds left. Out of bounds, last touch by the Chargers. Head coach Rich Lutka. His assistants this year, Jim Longer, Mike Babler, and Mike Bubb. Jim Longer has been with them a long time. I think this, about, I think he's been with them since uh, Coach Rich Ludka has been coaching the varsity, and that's been six years. Shot from the outside, no good by Seidenberg. Missed that one. He hasn't hit it yet. Scramble for the ball. Still loose down there. Finally picked up by Cronenberg and outside. Taken away, here comes O'Leary. O'Leary better watch that little turnaround pass around his back. Falling away jumper, no good. Nice follow out there by Seidenberg, but no good. One second left. Shot is up, no good that time. Good try by O'Rourke. He was trying to add to his 18 points already. Can you believe that? First half, 18 points. I think uh, O'Leary and Seidenberg both thought there was less time on the clock. They threw up a couple of off-balance shots thinking that the, the horn was going to blow. O'Leary. He's off balance there. He's not, he doesn't have good form, and, and Seidenberg makes a good play, but he probably could have got it back out. He kind of threw it up there in a hopeless shot also. He did one right when he came in, too, and it's uh, yeah, he'll get used to it, I think. Seidenberg, uh, as far as I've got in my records here, is a senior. He's a 5'11", 170 senior. Didn't play too much this year so far. Has seen uh, a lot of action in relief, but uh, has not seen any starting action. Coming off the bench is always kind of tough. He's a little... Uh, Piper when he gets out there. I watched him against Franklin the other night, and uh, he's a very emotional boy, and I think he has to kind of tone down his, uh, his motion a little bit, but he's got the tools. He's a good-sized boy, and he can shoot the ball, but he gets a little 
uh, hectic and a little emotional. Coach Ron Blomberg wanted to get a little speed in there, and he did. Ron Blomberg, who has been a coach at Brookfield Central from when the school opened in 55 in 1966. Later on, he coached at, uh, earlier, I should say, he coached at uh, Beaver Dam Wayland for four years. I think that was after he was at Brookfield Central. Right, he started out at Pesigo, and he came to Brookfield Central from Pesigo, and then on to Wayland Academy. And can you believe this? He has had, uh, I'm just adding these up real quick, but 11 titles in the three conferences he's coached in so far. Well, really, the the first full uh, school that they had was 1957, and from 57 to 66, nine years, they won five championships. Hey, Jerry, halftime here. The score is 37-35, Sussex Hamilton leading Brookfield Central. And this is Sussex Hamilton's pom-pom girls, and let's check out their act. from Sussex Hamilton High School on Sports 36. The score is Sussex Hamilton 37, Brookfield Central 35. Right before this game got started, Jerry Sullivan had a chance to talk to Ron Blomberg back at Brookfield Central. Let's check in with that interview right now. Blomberg's got a nice ring to it. Are you getting used to it again, Ron? Well, yes, Jer. In fact, our roles have kind of changed, haven't they? See, about three years ago, I was doing this, and you were coaching. I don't think people would uh, believe that, but it really is good. I enjoy that uh, coach title, Jerry. You know, 15 years ago, or uh, well, more than that, 1955, I should say, you started the whole program at Brookfield Central, and then in 66, you went on to what certainly have turned out to be some, some fine experiences for you. Now here we are in 1978. Can you reflect a little bit over that 23 years? Well, I was very fortunate to start at a school like Brookfield. It was just Brookfield High School at that particular time, 1955, Jerry. I came down from Peshtigo, and there was a lot of molding and building to be done. And fortunately, we had very good kids. We had a good coaching staff that worked together very well, and we molded a pretty good program. But, you know, I've been gone for 12 years. I had a little taste of working with the girls over there last year. But so many things have happened for the uh, positives. The program has grown. The whole conference has grown. I think that's a credit to the people that are involved, the coaches, the administration, that have put emphasis on all the important levels. And athletics is one of those levels. And that to think that now the Brabant Conference, for instance, has come along and kind of dominated the scene uh, basketball-wise, getting to the state tournament, uh, I didn't think it would ever happen. You know, uh, the two teams that are playing here tonight, your team, Brookfield Central, uh, Coach Ludka's team, Sussex Hamilton, the last two years, both teams have been at the state tournament, along with Homestead last year with Central and Brookfield East with uh, uh, the team the year before. How do you see the Braveland Conference in relationship to the other conferences in the area, Ron? Well, I think they have good balance. I think their programs are the key. They go down into the great schools. They have organized them very well. The coaching is just superb. I don't think, I can't think of any school that doesn't have a good program with their coaching staff. And that's what it's all about. I think the fact that they got to the state tournament, we were very fortunate in 65 to get there. I guess we were the first Braylon team to get there at that particular time. But they've gone often since then. And I think that has done a lot for the confidence. Co the confidence of the kids and built up the, pro the prestige and, and uh, just 
brought up programs with the kind of confidence they should have. You know, your basketball coach for Brookfield Central, I think, too, that uh, probably you're most noted for your other great responsibility, and that is the administrative assistant for the Milwaukee Bucks. And probably could tell us a little bit about the responsibilities you have with the Bucks. I joined the Bucks in the early years of their existence in the late 60s, and uh, I've done a lot of things for the Bucks. I guess about everything there is to be done, uh, but mainly my uh, responsibilities are working with the camps, the summer camps, and we do have a fine program, and you know a lot about that, Jerry, because without you, uh, we wouldn't have a camp program, I'm sure. But I think that it's good in that respect, because uh, I've gotten out now and have taken a look at the program. I see the kids every summer in the camps, but now to live with them and see the reaction, I think that's going to be enriching for our camp program. You've been at every level. You've started at a small school up north at Peshigo. You've been at a large school here at Brookfield Central. With the camp program, you've seen the college level, and you've scouted the college level as a scout for the Bucks. You've coached at the pro level uh, intermittently with uh, Coach Nelson. How do you see the correlation between all levels, Ron? Well, I think that I am fortunate. I've touched all the bases, Jerry, and I know that this level right here, the high school level, is probably the most gratifying, the most satisfying in coaching because you can teach. They do respond, and I am a firm believer that uh, discipline is important for all of us, and certainly these young people are looking for it, and they accept it very well. And I think in that respect, uh, this level is still the level that you can get your points across and come across, I think, uh, most enriching to the person itself. I think that there's a lot of relativity between uh, you go up to the best pros, the Brian Winners and Junior Bridgmans and Marcus Johnson come down to this level, and they're still kids, you know, and they still react the same way. I can remember the year we went to the playoffs, and after beating Chicago, and looking forward to Boston, those pros, John McLaughlin, Kareem, and Oscar, and the rest of them were just like a bunch of kids in that bus on the way back. So we have to realize that there aren't, uh, there aren't that many differences. Skill-wise, yes, but they're still human beings. But this is where the level is most satisfying as far as teaching is concerned, Jared. A little bit about your team. Uh, last year, they, they had 11 and 12 season, but they came on very well at the end of the season in climaxic by going to the state tournament. You have some of those boys back, but you've run into a few problems that all coaches have to kind of look for. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I think that we have uh, ha have to get to know each other, and that's what we're going through right now. We're doing a lot of experimenting offensively and defensively, and we're going to continue to experiment until we find that right combination. Right now, our problems seem to be quickness. We don't have a lot of quickness. We've got little speed, and there is a difference between quickness and speed, as you know, Jerry. But we're trying to mold or get the right kind of defense and offense together that will be complementary to our particular uh, group. And uh, we might not be able to use all the things that I like to use. Uh, that isn't important. The important thing is that we do find that right combination for this particular group. Now, injuries are always a major part of all seasons. Uh, the off-season uh, performance of some of these boys have led to a little slow start for them in basketball. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about some of those situations? Well, yes, our center, uh, Don Kent, D. Kent, uh, had a problem last spring. He broke his ankle, and it was in a particular spot in his ankle where it heals very slowly. The blood supply there is inadequate to get past healing process. So he has come on very slowly. He missed the whole football season. Mike Schumacher, we lost him in the Fort Atkins game a week ago and uh, with muscle spasm, and so we don't look for him to play much tonight, if, if at all. And we've had the little things that occur, I think, uh, uh, here and there, the pains and ills that all, all teams have. I don't believe in excuses. We've had a lot of fouls, and I think basically that's because we're trying, the kids have been trying to adjust to a system of defense that I like to use, and maybe we better vacate that and look for some compromises. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, you know, Ron, when I talk to you, I kind of look upon you just like a, a brother. And I know the type of person you are. I know the type of coach you are and how efficient you are in your job. I think Brookfield Central High School, Brookfield Central, or Brookfield Community, and everyone is better off with Coach Ron Blomberg back in the high school ranks. Thanks a lot for being our guest. I really appreciate it. Best of luck in the rest of the season. My pleasure, Jerry. Thank you very much. Holiday entertaining often involves drinking. Some of us like to drink to add to the fun. And most people are pretty responsible about controlling their own drinking. But there are always a few who get themselves into trouble. When that happens, you can't let them drive or walk in traffic. You have to care enough to take action. Hold it! In another kind of emergency, you'd be willing to do a lot to save a friend's life. You'd drop everything to get him to the hospital. 
you would donate blood if you could, or give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Hmm? Driving drunk can also be a life-or-death situation. You can't let friends drive. Talk them into letting someone else drive. Be persistent. It may be embarrassing or frightening, but if you care enough, you'll find a way. Remember, you are first a friend, then a host. A message from the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety. When you're looking for a real alternative, top quality programming without interruption, look no further than public television, WMVT Milwaukee. Now, Ron Blomberg's a fun guy to talk to. I've uh, known him for a couple of years. You know, you've know, you known him a lot longer than that. Probably had your South Milwaukee team play against him a couple times, Jerry. Ron, but uh, he's a godfather for our youngest boy. Ron and I are very close friends. We're probably just like brothers. I work with him during the summer and known him since 65. We were in the same tournament together, but we've never played against each other. But he's a fine gentleman, and uh, uh, we sure think a lot of him. We're all set to start the second half of action here from Sussex Hamilton High School. Hamilton leading 37-35, all set to go again, and I think that's one of our people from Sports 36 all set to either stuff the basketball or else he has long legs. <laughs> I think he's just fixing the microphone on the backboard. All right, again, Sussex Hamilton with a two-point lead at halftime here. 37-35, we're all set to go. Switch them around, get ready to go the other way. Leading score so far, Dan O'Rourke at 18 so far for Sussex Hamilton. Leading scorer for Brookfield Central is Mark Sorensen with 11. This is Young Bauer with the ball. Young Bauer, his shot comes right back to him. No good. Tries to drive the lane, pick up some fouls, and I think that's probably one of the things Coach Lutka said. Draw the fouls. You've got a couple from all those big guys and get the rest. Five puts you out in high school. Turnaround. Schaefer's good. Tie ball game again. Good, that was a good assist by Sorensen. He saw the open man. Schaefer took it, put it right up. Schaefer's been playing very well. He's uh, kind of making up for some of the lack of some of the players who are not playing tonight. Shot from the corner real quick by number 22, Dan O'Rourke. Sorensen got screened out, and he wasn't able to get out and cover his area. That's the thing for uh, Brookfield Central. They've got, uh, oh, who's the player? Mike Schumacher, a 6'6", 170 senior who is not playing. He's got some problems, uh, some back spasms, and the reason he's not playing. We had a jump ball called out of the corner. Also out is Tom Holman, a 6'1 guard who broke a foot, I believe, in football. Right, the boat, no, he's got a knee injury, and they've got it in a cast to, uh, just to get incapacitated. Oh, but okay. both of those boys were starters last year on the team that went to the state tournament. 39-37, Hamilton with the lead. Put them up now, 41-37. Both Patterson and Youngbauer are awfully good shooters from that perimeter area. If they don't have someone with a hand in their face, they can be awfully effective. Patterson with seven points in the game. Nice shot that time for Frank Schaefer. Eight points now for him. Right now, Brookfield Central has taken advantage of that middle area, and Schaefer's put two in a row in from the key area. Young Bauer, play. Good. shot on O'Leary, but a foul on him. That's a tough play for a, a, a young fellow that size. He makes an excellent effort, but he's five foot eight, and Young Bauer is six foot one, and you just don't have enough body to go up there and get a clean block. Second personal on Mike O'Leary. Ah, he got him with his elbow on his yeah. elbow. I think he had a good block, but the rest of his body caused the contact. Young, young Bauer is on the line to shoot a pair. He's three out of four so far tonight. Nine points in the game for Terry. Now he's in double figures. Forty-two thirty-nine, Sussex Hamilton on their home court, now leading 43-39. 6.25 remaining in the third period. Sports 36 tonight again at Sussex Hamilton. John Bartell, Jerry Sullivan, along with Terry Peterson, are a scorer. Out of the corner to Kent. They're trying to look to Schaefer in the middle, but a nice defensive effort put on by the Chargers. Last touch. Say uh, Sorensen touched it. Mark Sorensen, the 6'3", 185 forward. It makes and look good, at the defense. Makes a good move, but he lost his he lost his footing and kind of stumbled and went off Sorensen's foot. Kind of nodded, said, I agree. You got me. Shot from the outside. Patterson, no good. Battle for Sorensen picks it up. Here comes O'Leary. O'Leary's got uh, on the left side, Russ Gregg, 34, decides to pass to Sorensen, though. Sorensen shot, no good. Last touch. They're going to say, well, they're going to have a jump ball. The referee wasn't exactly sure who touched it last. 
They both had good hustle. Both went after it. The official had a good angle on it, too, right down the sidelines, but evidently he didn't feel either one clearly hit it. On the jump ball, last touchdown there by number 44, Paul Tobner. At least from this angle, but the referee had his own angle on that. He's the guy with the whistle, not me. So a four-point lead for Hamilton, jumping over again. Again, have the height advantage. Finally, they pull it down. Greg with the ball, back out to O'Leary. Well, I like about O'Leary. He never takes his eye off the, his teammates. He, he backs out of there, but he never turns his back on them. Good 2-3 zone defense now put on by Hamilton. They look down deep to Kent. Kent down, had all the time in the world and blew it. Here comes Youngbauer. Youngbauer, man on the left side, Cronenberg. Hand was up there by Schaefer. Didn't hit it, but Cronenberg gets it for his fourth point. Nice soft touch. 5-10 now. Excuse me, 5-15 remaining in the first third period of play. 45-39, Hamilton leading it. And coming up dry again as Brookfield sent on a foul on Kent. For Kent, that's his fourth personal foul. He's got a problem, but let's go back down to the other end of the court and try to pick up that last play. Good body balance here. He went straight up. Good defensive play. Nice soft touch. He the, was the official missed it. On it. I he, think the official missed it? it. I think he did get a piece of it on the downward flight and probably should have been called a goaltending. That was pretty close. 5-10 now remaining in the third period. Timeout. Brookfield Central. They are down by six. 45-39, the biggest lead so far for Sussex Hamilton. We'll take a look at this again, and I'm pretty sure Schaefer got a piece of this if you uh, look at the top of the screen. He just came flying through, just got down there in time. There he goes. Yeah, I think he, uh, I think he probably got... just did. I agree with you now. And not enough to change the arc of the ball. Well, it looked like it might have taken a little bit of pressure. short, gave it the little boost. I guess uh, justice prevails. And there's a nice one for the Hamilton cheerleaders. Wouldn't want to be on the bottom of that thing, though. Next week again, Sports 36, next Friday night. We're going to be live at New Berlin Eisenhower. New Berlin West, last year's Parkland Conference champ. We'll be taking on the Eisenhower squad at Eisenhower. John, uh, there's John Bartell, that's me, and Jerry Sullivan will be there. There's and, uh, uh, Ron Blomberg. His, coach, his assistant coach is Tom Pepple. Uh, that's a, an old familiar site that hasn't been around there for a while. Ron sitting on the bench coaching a high school team. He's happy to be back there. He said before the game, and you talked to him, he's happy to be where he is. He believes that this is a level where the real teaching is going on, and uh, he's certainly a, a great one to work with young men, and they're fortunate to have him back. The excitement of high school basketball and sports 36. We're bringing the best in basketball, football, bowling last week. You name it, we've got it for you. This, is the, this is the biggest lead we've had, I think, John. Six points. That's it. Now the uh, Central's going to have to start chipping away. They're not getting the shots. They're not falling. Schaefer that time off his knee. It might have been touched also by Sorensen, but last touch by the Central anyway. The turnovers are hurting them this half. They're, they're not getting the shots at the basket, and uh, Hamilton's coming down, and they are getting the score. Very good team of guards out here for the Chargers with Patterson and Youngbauer. Very heads-up players. And the nice thing is, John, they're both 6-1, so they got the, they got the size. A nice shout out to the outside by Dan O'Rourke. He has 22 points, and we're only in the third period. Underneath, down deep into the game is John Ellison. Ellison had the ball knocked out of bounds by O'Rourke, out of bounds for the Lancers. Now an eight point lead. And the turnovers have really hurt Brookfield Central. They haven't hit the shot at the basket themselves, and Hamilton's hitting that perimeter shot. Coming off the inbound stack, O'Leary. Oh, but he's moving. Takes his own shot this time. A couple of hands were slapped on her out there. And sucked into the stands goes Paul Topner. Going to retrieve the ball, but last touch by his team, so out of bounds to the Lancers. You're going to have to get in a better shot, a better open shot, but credit a good, solid charge of defense for all they... They're jamming up the middle a little bit better now. They're running a 2-1-2 zone. And Seems to be doing it. Schaefer underneath. Foul on the way up. Live fouls on number 44 topic. Jeff Cronenberg is doing a little bit better job defensively. Here he gets called for a foul. He, he gets into him a little bit afterwards. Yeah, they, Cronenberg was the man out there, but they, they call it on Topner for some I guess he was reaching around right behind him. There's the man. Paul Topner, 6'2, 173 junior. And surprising, they've got a number of juniors on this squad. And a lot of them see action, which is good for next year's team. 
Rick Lutka has had a fantastic season. He's or a career. He's been there five times, five years, and he's never finished suit. below. He's never finished below third place. Two first place, two second place, and a third place finish in the five years he's been varsity coach here. Had a good year last year, and now the Lancers starting to chip away a little bit on the lead. Down by six points now, and they're gonna have to start playing a little better basketball. Fewer mistakes, fewer turnovers. Patterson over to Young Bar. Young Bar hits it. There's a smart play. Now he had a shot, but he took a couple dribbles to get the higher percentage shot. 13 points now for Young Bar in the game. 3:36 remaining. Third period of play. Driving the line, Sorensen had it blocked cleanly. A couple of people down, including Sorensen. Now Tomner goes down. Man down deep. O'Rourke, good. Referee taking out of the play. <laughs> There's all kinds of action on that play. Woo. It's almost like hockey where they have to climb the boards. But that time, O'Rourke got the ball. You watch it for yourself as he got the pass down deep. I'll try to bring it to you as soon as we pick it up. All that action, we have to run it back a little bit further. Here he goes. Now, I don't know Ball if there's any down. contact there. The referee was in the picture until he was taking us. <laughs> I think he got blocked out, and he just anticipated that call. Well, he makes the free throw now, 52-41, and 11-point falls for the Chargers. That's going to be hard to come back from, I'll tell you. 3-14 remaining in the third. An 11-point lead for Sussex Hamilton. Don't have the real big men like they have in past years, like Dave Thorpe now playing for Northern Michigan, Vandenberg who's at Oklahoma, and an offensive foul coming up on the Lancers. So give it back to the Chargers of right, Sussex Hamilton. On the, bounced around the line. Good call. Good position that time also. From the outside, Patterson hits it. You can just see that going. Tim Patterson now with a total of eight, nine points. Timeout. Ron Blomberg, Central Lancer as they want it. They are down by 13 points. You know, Hamilton is a 55% shooting team from the field. And you can see here, they do not take easy shots. Now, they are running, and they're getting a lot of layup shots in some of the previous games. But in this game, they aren't getting many fast break baskets. They're all coming from the perimeter, and it's a sign of a good team when you can hit that perimeter shot. All right, we've got a timeout with 2.54 remaining in the third period. Next week, we're going to be coming to you live on Friday night. Usually, Sports 36 is on a Saturday night. Next week, we're going to be live Friday night. New Berlin Eisenhower. I'll be there with Jerry Sullivan to bring you the New Berlin Eisenhower, New Berlin West game. That'll be a good one. Inner city rivalries always seem to turn on the fans and turn on the teams and the coaches. And the announcers, I think. We have a good time. Also coming up tomorrow, if you can imagine the Monty Python trip recreating the legend of King Arthur, uh, you're ready for Monty Python on the Holy Grail tomorrow on Channel 10 Cinema Showcase. So don't miss Monty Python, Holy Grail, tomorrow evening, 9 o'clock on Channel 10. I understand we're going to have a little women's basketball coming through Channel 36 uh, in the near future. Some Iowa basketball. That's great basketball down there when it comes to girls basketball. They're wild. You know, earlier today, the Milwaukee Doe's played the Chicago Hustle at the arena. And I'll tell you, we wish them the best of luck. And that's going to be uh, quite something. That'll be a first. It'll be interesting to see how it's received by Milwaukee people. 13 point lead for Sussex Hamilton. They don't have the ball right now though. Sorensen tries to go for it. Good follow by Schaefer and good. They're gonna have to get a couple of turnovers here and in order to get back into the ball game. The turnovers that they've made have hurt them. They've got to get on the offensive board also. Look at Patterson. Patterson just won his 11th point of the game. Those are not easy shots, John. That was a long jump shot from the far corner. Turning it on now, a 13 point lead again. O'Leary tries to find the range from the outside. No good. Good rebound by O'Rourke. Looking down deep. He's got a man down there. Patterson. He's got the hot hand. Rebound comes off. Foul coming up. This one's going to be on who? It's going to be on number 44, Paul Topper again. Hamilton is playing awfully loose now. Those are good shots that they're making. I, sh I shouldn't say they're good shots. They're, they're tough shots. They're second, looking good. Second team, third personal on Topner. Here's that play again. Goes up for the shot. Underneath, good rebound by uh, Schaefer. He really came out of nowhere. He's a good leaper. 56 to 43. A good lead now for Sussex Hamilton. We're in the third period with 2.09 left to go in it. Inbound of the ball is Gray. Going over to O'Leary. Defense still applied, but they're falling back to half court now. Schaefer, good heads up ball player down to Sorensen. He can shoot. This time it's good. 
got to start doing that. Battle now in the lineup for Sussex. Hamilton at one guard to replace Patterson. Excuse me, no, he's still in there. He'll replace Topper. Some good balance scoring for the Hamilton team. Young Bauer with the ball now. Heads up play, looking where the action is. That's what you've got to do. You've got to be heads up. If you watch the ball all the time, you're going to miss what else is happening. Well, we got a foul now on Frank Schaefer. Frank Schaefer, foul number three. In bad position that time. He's a good leaper, but... A Battle just got... Uh, well, that ball goes out of bounds. Let's look at the last one. Schaefer came in, called for the foul. He let Battle right get in there. front of him. He let Battle move in front of him and get the position. He had to come over his back. See how Battle turned around when he heard the whistle? He wasn't sure who it was on right away. O'Rourke. I'll tell you, this guy is shooting some ball tonight. I'm impressed with their perimeter shooting. I've got him for 27 points unofficially, and uh, that is pretty good shooting. That's the best scoring of anybody in the conference so far this year up until this game. No double dribble call. Yeah, he had a little trouble holding on to the ball that time. Couldn't quite handle it, so Roy called for it and turnover. Still a 13-point lead, but we've got a whole other period. Brookfield Central might try something. Kins is out of the ball game. They're a big center, 6-5. Sorensen, no good. Foul underneath. And this is on Schaefer. Schaefer with four personal fouls here with 105 left in the third period. Jerry, that's going to mean trouble for the Lancers. These falls are not these falls are not very smart falls. You can see that. He's just pushing them out. Uh, he instead of being a little quicker and getting in front, those are just not smart falls. They hurt the team and he's not going to help sitting on the bench. You see the score right there. 13 point lead for Hamilton. And O'Rourke, who's on the line, has 27 points. And he has not got many easy ones. He's, he's got most of them from outside. You can tell the veterans. Now, he and Young Bauer are both returning starters, and you can tell they're taking control. Now, he knows how to put up the ball. Here we got him for now. 29 points, 60 to 45, Sussex Hamilton. Greg with the ball. Russ Gregg over to Schaefer. Keeping Schaefer in, even though he's got four fouls. They need his shooting and his rebounding ability. But he's got to play careful. They're going to try to put the ball in. He saw him laying off a battle that time. He's got to play more cautious. Can't take the dumb foul anymore. O'Leary outside. No good. Battle the only one there. Got a man down deep. Patterson. One man to beat. O'Leary. No good on the shot. Foul's going to be on O'Leary. His third personal. And I'll tell you one thing I saw, Jerry, which I like to see, is when a player is shooting a... Uh, taking a layup and he's fouled. We talked about this during the Nina game when they played uh, Waukesha North. You take the layup, you're going to be fouled, just keep on going. You might get the three point play. Watch it. Yeah, you never anticipate the ball. You just got to take it to the basket. He's having a good game. 12 points for Tim Patterson. And they've come in the second half because he didn't get too many the first half. Only one player on this Hamilton team with three fouls. That's Paul Tottenham, and he's out of the game right now. 62-47, and that is quite a commanding lead right now. Greg shooting from the outside, no good. Good follow-up by Sorensen. Good position. 15 points for Sorensen. Another shot this time. And Terry Youngbauer comes up with it. His 15th point of the game. A lot of players in the double figures now, and then Sussex Hamilton said they'd score about 85 a game. Don't be surprised if they score well over that tonight. I'll tell you, I like to watch Mark Sorensen play. He's the kind of player you just around the ball all the time. He gets a lot of rebounds. He was one of their top rebounders last year as a junior, and he gets a lot of garbage baskets just because of the fact that he's got a good touch, knows where to be around the basket. Tony Schrafer's on the line. He's got 14 points, also four fouls, so he's got to watch out. 64-50 now. Four seconds left in the third period. Good crowd here at Sussex Hamilton High School on Sports 36 night. John Bartell, along with Jerry Sullivan, next week will be live on Friday night as Schaefer hits that one. We'll tell you again about that. That's what they got to do. Good power. 
steal that time by Ellison. And that might be some good incentive going into the fourth quarter. Up to that point, they were being outscored 27 to 16. This is a, a very this alert heads up play. Four points in the last four seconds, Jerry. They had a timeout there. The clock always stops when they're shooting free throws. Ellison, look at it. Ellison heads up. This was a tough shot, too. He used the board very well. Big basket. Brings it down 11 points. That was a good quarter for Sussex Hamilton. Though they showed some excellent shooting, I thought. Uh, it's, I had someone call me after the last game, Jerry, and they always see the backboard. Let's see if we can get one of the cameras to take a shot of the backboard as, uh, as long as we're taking a look at a semi-pyramid from the Sussex Hamilton cheerleaders. On the backboard, they have a tape on the backboard to indicate, or paint possibly on the backboard to indicate what you might call the sweet spot of the backboard. And that's where, probably if you hit it on there, it's usually going to go in. There you go. There's sort of a half square right around the top of the basket. That's required on all backboards now, and it kind of gives you a target to shoot at. And if you can put it in there at a fairly decent amount of softness, it's going to bank in. You notice most everybody has a glass backboard now, too. Well, Wisconsin just went to that about, well, probably about five years ago, but they were, they had the metal board prior to that. All the other states had the back glass backboards, but Wisconsin just would not go to it. And about five years ago, they finally conceded to it. I think we have to thank our cameraman Joe Bauer for that one and Roddy Davis out here. Just when we call for a backboard shot, they give it to us. Winning the tip to start off the fourth quarter, Sussex Hamilton. They lead it by 11, 64-53. Delighting the home crowd so far. Wayne Battle with the ball. Back out to Young Bar. That was working around for a good shot, I think. At least they should. Now turnover. Battle took an extra step. Battling called and Central's got a chance to cut it down to nine again. They can get it down under the double figures. They probably could make a make a run at them here. They've got their center Kent back in at the 54. Got to work him around. Schaefer's got to watch out there. Number 52. He's got four personal fouls. The only person in real foul trouble. Well, I think that bad. Kent, Kent's got four also. Battle from the outside. Draws nothing but the hands of a Brookfield Central player. Coming down. Sorensen. Good. You know, with the 11-point lead, uh, Hamilton's certainly not going conservative. They're still coming down at him. Another turnover by O'Rourke. And the chance to cut it down by seven. And Sorensen, again, uh, we talked about him before. Now he's a smart player around the basket. Look at how he maneuvers. They he, thought he was going to go up right there. He's got good balance. He's got a good touch right around that basket. And he faked that young bar on that one. If he had gone up there, he might have had that shot block, possibly. Coach Chuck, or uh, excuse me, Rick Lutka. Well, I think Dr. he's a little on the side. I think he's a little concerned. They've come down four times and thrown up a couple of bad shots. And not only that, but they've had a couple of turnovers on the travel. So I think he's a little concerned and wants to probably settle him down. Anybody who watched the Milwaukee Bucks broadcast from just the last, uh, up until about, about two years ago when Ron Blomberg worked with Eddie Doucette, you always see him with that clipboard out. Another Larry Costello, but hey, he's got to direct those players. They're still learning. They're in high school. you got juniors and seniors out there, and you don't have pro basketball players out there. They need it more than the pro players. That's kind of his trademark, because when he when he was working with Eddie, uh, he called the old professor. The At old halftime, professor. he would use the diagram, the back door, the three-lane fast break, or whatever type of trapping defense they were using. It taught me a few things. I think it was real good for the average fan, because a lot of times you just don't get the intricate parts of the game, and I think it was a good teaching uh, point. Seven minutes remaining now in the fourth period in the whole game here in Sussex Hamilton leading it by nine points. O'Leary's open from 10 feet out. No good. Didn't follow his shot. Probably should have. Youngbauer comes up with it. O'Rourke got a lane to the basket. Puts it up too hard. Youngbauer got a one-handed tip up. No good. O'Leary comes up with it. Here they come down the left side. He's got a man left side. He'll go to him. Schaefer skies it. I once heard Eddie Doucette call that coming down with a little dew on it, coming off the clouds. That was a high one. They're making a run at him, so he's going to have a ball game. I once had an Eddie Doucette dictionary, but I'll try not to use it too much. Shot from the outside, no good by O'Rourke. And here come the child, the Lancers again. They're cutting that lead right down. The momentum is definitely with Brookfield right now. Chargers trying to hold on to their lead. From the outside, Greg. Greg up, no good. Battle for the rebound. Schaefer tries to control. No good. Sorensen and a foul is coming up on Kozak. Number 42, Jeff Kronenberg. His third personal foul. 
there's no doubt right now uh, Hamilton seems to be stumbling a little bit and the momentum seems, seems to be swinging towards Brookville Center. It's amazing how the, how the momentum can change. The third quarter uh, Hamilton got going and we're playing loose and doing everything right. Now this quarter they're, they're a little hesitant and seem to be pressing a little bit. Not in the shooting situation yet. Central with the ball. They'll work it on for the shot. O'Leary looking down deep. Good defense. Put on by the Chargers, but they're going to have to close it off even more. They're being very patient. They're running a, what amounts to just a triangle. O'Leary out to Greg. The back to O'Leary again. Got a man down deep. Schaefer, Schaefer with a turn, but too much off the glass. And luckily, the Lancers come back with the ball. O'Leary will set him up. Greg's open from 15. No good. Rebound. Controlled by Kent. Kent back up. I'd say he didn't have much of a touch on that shot. No, missed steal, missed everything. Young power down. Has a work on the left side. Almost loses it. Patterson over there now. Out to Taubner. Taubner holds it high, top of the key. Moves the basket by O'Rourke. We're going to have an offensive foul. Dan O'Rourke, his second personal is a good call. I'm not so sure if I agree with that call. Uh, it didn't look like he got there quick enough. I'll be probably see her in the replay here. Let's see if the defensive man is set. Looked like he slid in from the outside, or from the inside. It's a judgment call, so. We'll try to pick that play up in just a moment. Back to action here. Greg, the shot goes way off. Battle for the ball. Almost out of bounds, but Young Power with it. Got one man down there, Patterson. Down to Kronemeyer. Kronemeyer off in the glass. They go back up by nine with four, just under five minutes remaining in the game. That was a big bucket. Central had a couple opportunities to cut it to five, but now uh, Hamilton sort of broke the streak. Shot to work into the shooter. Schaefer, good. Brian Schaefer, when he's gotten the ball inside, he's been effective. We've got him for 20 points. He's the leading scorer tonight for the Lancers. From the outside by Patterson. Very calm, accepts a congratulations to O'Rourke, and they're back up by nine. 68-59. Those are good shots. Those are tough shots to stop. you got to give credit for those. Looking in the Schaefer. Schaefer with a hot hand again. No good this time. Battle for less touch by the Chargers. The partisan Sussex crowd not agreeing with it, but it was a proper call right down the end there. Referee right on time with it. Referee Lee Johnson. They're going to call a foul on there, Jerry. I believe on Cronemeyer, or Cronenberg, excuse me. That's who it was. On the line, Russ Gregg. Gregg, a 6'1", 160 senior. Came off the bench, didn't start the game, but he's done a pretty good job. Rebound controlled by O'Roy. Dangerous pass. Some bounce feed down at Cronenberg. Rims it. No good. Put up by Taubner. Must be a lid on top of that rim. The ball just would not go down. Kind of rare to see two rims in a row. Sorensen's got a man far side. Greg, Greg from 10. No good. Tapped up once and good by Kent. Don Kent with eight points. A seven-point lead. This is the closest it's been in a long time. And Central trying to chip away on that lead. You know, they look for that outside shot, too. Every one of them, when they get the ball, they're facing the basket, looking to shoot. Kind of forced that time by O'Rourke. Finally stolen. They're going to have a jump ball. They're going to have 6 4 Cronenberg. And check the other player who's that who's going to be jumping. This was a good effort by Kent. He got good position on the tip in. Kent, 54. Good tip. Sorensen jumping against Cronenberg. Cronenberg hit it uh, second time, but it was after it was touched, first of all, by Sorensen. Blocked by O'Leary. Again, too hard by Cronenberg. Blocked again by Schaefer. O'Leary with it. Crowd is on their feet right now. They're enjoying this game, and it's a good one. 3-11 remaining. Only a seven-point lead for Sussex Hamilton. 68-61. to 61. Ball is lost. Schaefer, but it went off the foot of O'Rourke. There's some, good, there's some great action underneath the basket here. Good really, block. look at O'Leary. Then Cronenberg put it up too hard. Had a hand on the face that time by, by uh, Schaefer, and Schaefer again on that block. Let's go back to live action. We're going to have a foul underneath. 
It's on Cronenberg. Cronenberg can't believe it, but that's on him. That'll be number five. I think he did a good job with the offhand, but he was he seemed to be leaning on his back, and any kind of contact like that is going to be our scorer, Terry Peterson, says that's the fifth foul, and so he's out of the game. Coming in the game for the first time tonight, number 32, Jim Schwemmick. Schwemmick, a 6'3", 195 junior. Not a lot of experience there, but he's got some good signs. He's carrying some good heft. He's the heaviest player on that team. You know, they have a lot of 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", players. I don't consider them small players. When I was coaching, I'd always welcome that type of boy. 5'8", 5'9", those are the old guys. He's still got a ball game, John. Six-point lead now for Hamilton, leading Central 68 to 62 exactly. Three minutes to go. Central has hung in there against a, a pretty good barrage by Hamilton. Well, I'll tell you, Jerry, we always promise to bring the best in sports on Sports 36. We're doing it tonight. Under three minutes now. Foul is coming up on Westwood. He was all anxious that time. Third personal on Russ Gregg will send number 14, Terry Youngbauer, to the line where he is uh, five out of six so far. And that's pretty good shooting. 15 points in the game. Wayne Battle coming in now. They like him a lot out here. Yeah, he's a pretty popular player. You know, he gets great position on, on the boards. He's a good rebounder because he's fundamentally very solid. Battle in for Ceramic. I think they wanted him on that offensive or defensive board down there on the free throw. Controlling the board is Schaefer. Almost loses it. O'Leary is going to be called. A good call by the referee. Uh, had the ball. Came down with it. Tried to dribble again. That's double dribble. You know, they, the key on that entire play was the pass. The pass was high, and he had to go up and get it, and he put the ball down when he came down with the pass and then put the dribble down the second time. See the time ball. remaining. 2.49 now. The clock continues to tick away. Patterson with the ball. Watch closely. The defense starting to tighten up now for Central. They know they have to. Can't give up anymore. Battle. Good Blocked play. nicely by Kent. Gets his own rebound. Puts it up to Youngbauer. Good. What a nice effort by Terry Youngbauer, who's hit his 17th point. Seemed like he was in there an awful long time, but the fish didn't call her. <laughs> Eight point basket. lead. Chargers tap on the deflection of the pass. Almost goes in, but not quite. Ork is down. He has 31 points. 31 points for Dan O'Rourke, and what a game we're seeing. Foul coming up on Youngbauer. For Youngbauer, foul number four. I don't think they'd like you to lose him. I'll tell you, this kid, Dan O'Rourke, is showing me something tonight. Gets the pass from Youngbauer. Youngbauer looking the other way. And he's 6'3", 185 pounds, and he really handles himself well, awful smooth. I'd say he'd be an excellent guard on any team, but he's playing a forward position tonight as Patterson and Youngbauer controlling the activity on the outside. And we've got Youngbauer uh, for, what, 17 points, O'Rourke with 31 points. Patterson has a total of uh, 15 points. And I'll tell you, we've got some good action. Rich Lutka talking to his charges from Sussex Hamilton. He's got himself a good ball team. Well, you know, he's, he said all along that he's got an excellent shooting team. He's got four players that can put the ball in the basket, but shooting 55% as a team. And certainly Aurora and Patterson and Youngbauer have showed us three boys that can put it up from good distance very consistently and hit the basket. Now back up to a 10-point lead. His team is 2-1 and one overall. Their one loss uh, came at the hands of Whitefish Bay Dominican, 85-69, and Dominican has got most everybody back from last year's team. He's one of the fine young coaches in the league. Then you got Ron Blomberg, just the got the one, of the, one of the old veteran coaches and sure. one of the young young coaches. I think two fellows like this would make the Braven Conference such a tough conference. You know, two different styles of play. We talked about this in our uh, pregame show, Jerry, and I think we're seeing it exactly this right now. More of a setup team for Brookfield Central. And this guy who's shooting right now, O'Leary, Mike O'Leary. First time of the free throw line tonight, he hits it. And uh, brings his team within nine, 72 63. And then he got the run and gun team of uh, Sussex Hamilton. They're doing, they're doing a pretty good job. Both of these teams. And look at an eight point lead again for Hamilton. I think you're going to find better entertaining than watching two teams go at each other like they are. I'll tell you, the Bucks are fun to watch, but I'll take a high school game any day. Battle on the right side. 
over to Young Bauer. Young Bauer tries the lane. Pass over down deep. And they're just going to control the ball. Work for a good shot if they can. Clock is ticking away. 140. The fans starting to realize that that's what they're doing. Battle works underneath off the hands of his teammate, O'Rourke. They queued up about 30 seconds that time, though, John. That was uh, that was the intent. Yeah. Lancers with an eight-point lead here with 130 remaining. A minute and a half left. Greg from the outside. Hasn't been too hot. I'd say it. Every time I say a guy's not hitting, he hits it. And every time I'm saying he's hitting, he, miss he misses it. O'Rourke with the ball. They'll just try to work it around, keep it outside. Patterson, they don't have to shoot. They've got an eight-point lead. Four-four, excuse me, six-point lead now. And a foul. Foul is on Russ Gregg. For Russ Gregg, his fourth personal foul. They have to do this, so they have to put him on the line and hope that they miss. When you're when you're down by six points with a minute and seven, you've got to get the ball back. But I'll tell you, you want to put a, a good, a poor free throw shooter there. And who do they have? Young Bauer there. He's only missed two out of uh, six. He's a 63% shooter on the season. Well, it paid off that time. Sorensen with the ball now. Over to O'Leary. They've got to score and score faster. Down by six. Inside. And it's Kent. Kent has been playing with four fouls for the longest time, but he puts it down that time. And Don Kent with 10 points. Young power. Over to Patterson. Patterson up from 10 feet. Good. By the clutch basket. Well, I'll tell you, they didn't have their lead, and I think they've got it sealed up now. 74-68, a foul. Charging. Charging on O'Leary. And that's just about going to do it. As Sussex Hamilton now is up by eight points. Excuse right me, six course, points. Yeah. He thought he had the seam. O'Rourke moved over. Threw the ball. Patterson with the ball. A man down deep going for his 33rd point is O'Rourke. Oh, I enjoy that. There again was an example of tremendous body balance for a boy his size. And Brookfield Central calls timeout. Timeout here from Sussex Hamilton with 27 seconds left to play and an eight point lead for Hamilton over Brookfield Central 76 to 68. Well, Jerry, looking ahead to next week, New Berlin West against New Berlin Eisenhower will be live Saturday, next Friday night at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock next Friday. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Here's this last play again. Look at Patterson. He puts the ball on the floor here, gets a good position, slides, comes up, good body balance. Excellent play. I'll tell you, 33 points. I don't think we have seen a high-scoring game like that for anybody for a long time here on Sports 36. And always the games are contested right down the last couple of minutes, usually right down to the final buzzer. This game, eight-point lead. Uh, I don't think uh, I, I saw Brookfield Central score four points uh, with four seconds left in the third quarter. In the first you half. never know. First half was uh, back and forth, two-point difference. Hamilton came out in the third quarter and had a good quarter. Now Brookfield's made a, made a run at him, but Hamilton's responding again. Central's got to get the ball up and in in a hurry. Schaefer up with a shot. No good. Tapped up once. Controlled. Controlled by Taubner. Out to O'Rourke. O'Rourke, they have the ball. Underneath for a shot. And good is number 32, Rick Jim Schrammick. Five seconds left now. And that's going to be just about Ort. O'Rourke with the ball. Puts it up. Hits it. He hit it. They're going to count it. 35 points for O'Rourke. Look at him get out by his teammates. Boy, oh, this one happy kid right now. We'll try to get some of the scoring. Jerry Sullivan's down on it, going down on the floor right now. And what a game. And it was as though they just won the Braveland Conference title. And Dan O'Rourke, who hit, what, 10, 20 points in the last game, put this up at the buzzer, right with some toilet paper from one of the fans. But watch the referee. Yep, he said it counted, and he is mobbed by his teammates right away. Patterson, who had fed the ball down to him, and the final score in tonight's game is Sussex Hamilton, 80, and Brookfield Central, 68. The records now, Sat, uh, Hamilton is 3-1 overall, 2-0 in the Braveland Conference. They're on top. They have a share of the lead, at least, depending what the rest of the teams did this weekend. 
Brookfield Central Lancers are now one, or excuse me, 0-1 in, in the conference. Correct my own mistake right there. And one and four overall. They lost to Brookfield East in their first conference game and now lose to Sussex Hamilton by the score of 80 to 68. Very quickly, this one down some of the scores unofficially. Leading the way for the winning Sussex Hamilton on their team on their way to 80 points, 35 points for Dan O'Rourke. He hit 15 shots, perfect from the field, uh, perfect from the uh, free throw line, rather, with five free throws and five attempts, 15 baskets for 35 points. Other scorers, Terry Youngbauer had an outstanding game also, 17 points. There were 17 for Tim Patterson, so those three guys accounted for the bulk of the scoring. What, uh, 69 points right there out of their 80. The rest of the scoring looked like this. Jeff Cronenberg had six points, two for Jim Stramick. Uh, two for Wayne Battle. We've got uh, the other scorer was Paul Topper with one point. Unofficially for the Brookfield Central Lancers, and there's 68 points. We've got 21 points for Frank Schaefer, 17 for Mark Sorensen, 12 points for Michael Leary, 10 for Don Kent, 6 points for Russ Gregg, and 2 points for John Ellison. Down on the floor, we're going to try to find Jerry Sullivan as soon as we can find where he is on the floor and find out who he's got. We'll try to get somebody down there in just a couple of moments. Let's take a look again what's coming up next week on Sports 36. We're going to be with you live next week. It'll be Friday night, December 15th at 8 o'clock. Jerry and I are going to be out at New Berlin Eisenhower High School for an intercity rivalry. New Berlin West, last year's Parkland Conference champ, will be taking on New Berlin Eisenhower at Ike High School. And that game will be on Friday night, next Friday, at 8 o'clock. So that'll be an exciting game. And again, we saw a good one here tonight. Started off very close. Hamilton took a lead of about 10 points. And then the uh, Lancers of Brookfield Central started chipping away, started coming back. They managed to tie it, go ahead by three or four points at one time. But then Sussex Hamilton in the second half just started to take charge. They had only a six-point lead at the end of the third period. But in the fourth period, Dan O'Rourke was turned loose, hit for six points. Tim Patterson hit for four points in the fourth period. Uh, Terry Youngbauer had a couple of points and a couple of free throws on a shot from the field. Jeff Cronenberg had a couple of points. And they just turned it on. And the final score again was Sussex Hamilton 80, 68 for Brookfield Central. And that's the way it went here tonight. Jerry Sullivan still looking for somebody down there. I think he's going to have somebody with him. There you have some of the scoring tonight. Schaefer had a very good game. He was in uh, foul trouble for a while. He had four, finished with four fouls. Don Kent had four fouls. Russ Gregg had four fouls. Michael O'Leary had four fouls. And Mark Sorensen had two. So you look up and down the line, no one fouled out except for uh, Sussex Hamilton. That was Jeff Cronenberg. But he played a pretty good game, pretty good defense, keeping the people out led his team to that final score right there. So for Rich Luck, his team again, record 3-1 and one overall, 2-0 and oh in the conference, 1-4 and four for Bron Blomberg's Brookfield Central Lancers, and 0-2 oh and two in the conference. Jerry Sullivan has got a couple of players down there, Dan O'Rourke, Terry Youngbauer. Let's bring it in. And uh, Jerry is down on the floor. Let's bring him right now. We've got a happy group of Chargers here. Uh, Dan O'Rourke, who had a, just a super game offensively, and uh, Terry Youngbauer, the team leader, the quarterback of the team. Dan, I'm not sure. Unofficially, uh, uh, your coach mentioned that you may have set a school record tonight with 37 points. How do you feel about an effort like that? Really great. I mean, there's a lot of guys helping me do it. I have a really lot of key passes. Terry, Tim, Paul, the whole group did excellent. Well, you know, the thing that, that really amazed me was the, the great body balance you had. And, of course, you hit a lot of shots from, from out on the perimeter, which were high percentage shots. You didn't get that many from in close. This Brookville Central team has some big, big players. Did you, was it designed to go outside more than to try to go inside? Yeah, well, mostly, yeah, we we're trying to get the ball in there, try to foul them out, you know, try to get a lot of fouls on them. But so happened I had open shots I couldn't pass up. Terry, uh, I don't know how many assists you had tonight, but I, I know you weren't happy with your shooting, but I thought you played an awfully good game. I saw you the other night against Watertown also, but uh, playing against a boy like O'Leary. Now, Michael O'Leary had a good game tonight. When you're playing against someone that's... Uh, uh, good amount shorter than you. Do you have any different feelings? 
Uh, not really. I'd kind of like to pull them up if I can and, uh, you know, maybe drive more on him if he's smaller. I can get, you know, it's a little bit short. I can shoot over him. But I wasn't having a good shooting night, so you gotta, I just thought I should pass more. Dan was hitting, so. Well, you know, you know, the thing that interests me, too, is how you feel about the last year you had Vandenberg underneath, six foot eight, and you went inside most of the time. This year, you're more run and gun. You get an opportunity to shoot that perimeter shot. You get an opportunity to shoot outside more. Do you like this set of, sort of game? Yeah, we always kind of, yeah, we've always kind of wanted to run, but we've always had big guy, big kids, so, you know, we, 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 we use the post up, so, but this year we haven't got it, so we had to go to a running game, so we really had no choice, and everyone, everyone really likes it. I want to get a comment from your coach. Coach, congratulations on a great game, and I think uh, the transition to the run and gun game certainly has been a good one, and uh, I probably could comment about the outside shooting of this team, which is certainly its strong point. Right, we're, we've got good perimeter shooters, and that's what we intend to use this year. Uh, but we have to be—we have, still have good shot selection, although we are good perimeter shooters. You still miss them. Well, you know, this was an awfully big uh, Brookfield Central team, and I thought it was excellent basketball. I don't know where you can find better entertainment than this. Did you have any special plan because of their height? No, we just knew that we had to beat them down the floor as, as, as well as we could, and we felt we had to keep them off the board. And I thought our kids just fought on the boards, and that was that was really important to me, and I was real proud of the kids. Yeah, an excellent third quarter, uh, uh, Dan. You shot awfully well in the third quarter, and you got some great shooting from uh, Patterson, your uh, running mate at guard, and uh, most of it was from the outside. Did you feel that you had the game pretty well broken open in that third quarter? You were coming on strong. Yeah, well, you had the good momentum. Yeah, more or less, but it, it always can change really easy. And, we had a we had a nice lead, but they kind of, they came back at that one time, and then just got to play smart. If it, you know. In this game of basketball, it doesn't take much time to score three or four baskets. Defensively, now you you full court press. Is that your philosophy? Uh, just about every game. We we are a, a pressing team all the time. Uh, we have since I've been here. Uh, but tonight they were hurting, so we went to a three quarter court press. But then we had to go to a zone because we felt that they were hurting us with their inside game. Also, uh, Schaefer was hurting inside a little bit in the middle, but you plugged that up with the two one two zone very well. Right, we, we, we tried, but he still got his points. He had a heck of a night. Well, I just want to uh, congratulate uh, Coach Letka and these two fine ball players of his and his entire team. I think he's in for an excellent season. I know the two Brookfield schools were picked as possible contenders, so when you can get past one of them this early in the season with the nice effort that you did, it's got to give you momentum. And I want to wish you a lot of luck, and we've enjoyed being over here. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Dave. Okay, Jerry, thank you very much. And again, the final score of tonight's game was Sussex Hamilton 80 and the Brookfield Central Lancers 68. And again, next week we've been telling you about it. Sports 36 will be live next Friday night. So you'll be with us at 8 o'clock next Friday night when Sports 36 is at New Berlin Eisenhower. Jerry and I will be out there for the New Berlin West, New Berlin Eisenhower game next Friday night, December 15th at 8 o'clock. And uh, Parkland Conference, we've been there. We've been in the uh, Suburban Conference before. And New Berlin West is the leader so far on the Parkland Conference. So you'll be with us for that one next Friday night at 8 o'clock. And as usual, we'd like you to get up and go to the phone and dial this number. It's a new one. I even have to look at my sheet and tell exactly what it is. 799-1102. 799-1102. And call that number right now. Let us know how many people were watching tonight's game. 799-1102, or you can write to us as usual at Sports 36, 1015 North 6th Street, Milwaukee 53203. That number again, the call is 799-1102. Again, just a reminder, next week on Sports 36, it'll be next Friday night at 8 o'clock, December 15th. Sports 36 will be live in a Parkland Conference game between Parkland Conference leader New Berlin West and New Berlin Eisenhower. They'll be live Friday night, December 15th, right here on Sports 36. So for Terry Peterson, who's back here and always with us, and for Jerry Sullivan, this is John Bartell. We'll see you next Friday night at 8.
Welcome once again to Sports 36. I'm John Bartell, working with me tonight, my old buddy Jim Smolens, former head basketball coach at Milwaukee Lincoln High School. Tonight, the proverbial barn burners are on our hands. The hosting Sussex Hamilton Chargers leading the Braveland Conference. One game back to Brookfield East Spartans, the team they'll be facing tonight. In order to stay in the race, East has to beat a very good Hamilton team in this game. The Brookfield team has some real horses, though. Their center, 6'7", Andy Matter, scoring at a 16-point per game clip and averages about eight rebounds a game. He gets pretty good support from his guard, sophomore guard J.C. McMullen. And East, by the way, has won four conference games this year in overtime. Not a bad record. Hamilton, on the other hand, is rated highly in the state this week. They have one of the best point guards in the area in Terry Youngbauer, who scored 34 points last Tuesday night against Menominee Falls North. Well complimented by Dan O'Rourke, Tim Patterson, Wayne Battle, who's been getting quite a bit of playing time tonight. We look for him later on. Hamilton scores a lot of points. They've been averaging about 74 points a game so far this year, which is not too bad for a high school team. Not Jim, bad at all, John. Not too bad. And Brookfield East has beaten Sussex Hamilton in the Braveland Conference already this year. Question is, can they do it again tonight and move in a, a tie for first place in the Braveland Conference? Well, John, as you said earlier, it, it will be quite a barn burner, but I don't think that East will be able to turn the tide again. They were able to play that zone and uh, get every one of the Hamilton players out of their rhythm. Although, since then, every one of them have really been in their rhythm. They scored a lot of points. I don't think the 2-3 zone will stop them. Although, Laverne Lubstarf has said that the way that he wins games is that he controls the board. And he has two big horses that can do it. Although, we got some running gunners on that Hamilton team. So I'm looking for quite a barn burn, as you mentioned earlier, John. And I'm looking forward to a good one, too. We'll be back with the start of this game in just a moment. From Hamilton High School in Sussex, Wisconsin, Sports 36 brings you Braveland Conference action between the Sussex Hamilton Chargers and the Brookfield East Spartans. Good evening, everyone. This is a big one tonight. We've had some big games in the last couple of weeks. But when you're looking for the championship in the Braveland Conference, uh, this is the place to look tonight. Right now, Sussex Hamilton riding high on top of the Braveland Conference with a record in the conference of 10-1. and 1. But right behind them, a very surprising team so far this year, the Brookfield East Spartans, who are at 9-2, and two, one game back. And the one loss so far this year, as we said in our open, Jim, is that one that Sussex... And the Brookfield East Spartans. Sussex Hamilton, the one loss that they have so far is the Brookfield East. Let's dump, bump it down now to Alex Dietrich, tonight's public address announcer for the introductions of the players. To introduce the senior cheerleaders performing for their last home game. The senior cheerleaders, Pam Gig, Larry Detzlaff, Janine DeLaurier, Mary Bada, and Janet Podolsky, captain. At this time, we would like to introduce the senior ball players who will be playing their last home game for the Hamilton Chargers. At a guard, senior number 10, Tom Smith. At a guard, senior number 20, Irv Rapus. And now for the starting lineups for both teams. Starting at center for the Spartans, number 53, Andy Matter. Starting at center for the Hamilton Chargers, senior Jeff Kronberg. At a guard for the Spartans, number 13, Bill Wilcox. At 
Yellow guard for the Chargers, number 12, senior Tim Patterson. Yellow guard for the Spartans, number 25, J.C. McMullen. Another guard for the Chargers, number 14, senior, Terry Youngbar. Another <laughs> forward for the Spartans, number 45, Dan Kesnick. Another <laughs> forward for the Chargers, number 22, senior, Dan O'Rourke. And at forward for the Spartans, number 51, Andy Gardner. And at forward for the Chargers, Junior, 44, Paul Kotner. Head coach for the Spartans, Ron Lindsdorf. For the Chargers, Rich Lipka. Referees for tonight's game, Barry Mano of Princeville, now from Sussex Hamilton, our national anthem. Jim Smolens, as we said, we're going to have a good one. We had a good one, too, uh, last week when we had Dominican just squeaking by Marquette University High School by the score of uh, 42 to 40, I believe it was. You know, and John. Double overtime in that one. Uh, this game tonight is very similar to the game last week. Marquette that plays the pattern offense. A fast break only when there's nothing there but the basket. Whereas uh, Dominican, that run and shoot. Hamilton, also the run-and-shoot type game. Should be very similar to last week. All right, jumping center, Jeff Cronenberg, 6'4", excuse me, Paul Taubner is going to be jumping now. He's a forward, but he'll be jumping number 44 in the white, the red and white for the Chargers, and the blue and the gold for the Spartans, and winning the tip-off is Sussex Hamilton. This is Terry Youngbauer with the ball. Tim Patterson is running mate at the other guard. He's got the ball right now. Setting the pick is Tobner, 44. Jeff Cronenberg underneath. Cronenberg, 42. And pulling down the rebound real quick is Andy Matter on the missed shot by the Chargers. And this game is well underway. Chargers like to run the ball. As we said, averaging about 74 a game. They like to shoot about 85 if they could. Shooting very well, too. Over 50% as a team. Real quick. Getting on the board, number 45, Dan Kesenich, and the East Spartans jump out on top. Kesenich, his brother, Jim, played at Brookfield East. Good football player, good basketball player at the same time. Chargers trying to bounce it down to Tobner, lose it off his hands, out of bounds to the Spartans. You know, John, that 2-3 uh, zone they're using is the same thing they used the first game to beat uh, Hamilton. Spartan coach Laverne Lubsdorf told me before the game he's going to try to play his own kind of game. He's not going to get in a running game if he can help it. Foul coming up. No. Offensive is the call, I believe. You know, it's amazing that the number of calls that are, are not made like that. You, you see, anytime a player drives underneath, just like he's doing here, he cannot jump back into the man as he did. He has to go straight up. So the foul on Matter, first foul down quickly. J.C. McMullen, block shot. Nice block shot by Tobner. And McMullen, the sophomore guard, gets it blocked, trying to save it. Kohnberg off the line, and it's going to be East ball, and East is starting to jump on a little bit of a lead. 
thing we're seeing right away is turnover. That's what's going to hurt tonight. Again, if Brookfield East wins this game, they're at a tie for first place in the Braveland Conference. If they lose it, well, the championship of the, of the Braveland Conference will be all for Sussex Hamilton. Baseline, shot by Kesenich. Good, he's got all four points of Brookfield East. The Spartans jumping out on top quickly, Jim. Oh, they're, they're looking good in that zone already. You know, I asked... Uh, go ahead, John. Well, Patterson with the ball out on top, or Youngbauer, rather, from the outside. That's O'Rourke. No good. Outside, these Spartans are controlling the ball right away. Set in the lineup right away. J.C. McMullen, 25-13 is Perry Wilcox. Down to the corner. Andy Garter. Right down to the baseline. Last touch by who? Sussex Hamilton. Andy Matter is 53. Kessinich, as we said, is 45. And McMullen, the only sophomore on the team for the Brookfield East Spartans, starting. And he's done a real good job so far this year. Excellent free throw shooter, averaging about 80% from the free throw line. From the free throw line. Gardner trying to put up his own shot. Back up. Good. 6-0. Brookfield East. And the Sussex Hamilton side of the stands are quiet. From the outside, shooting is Patterson. Up, Brown, no good. Rebound, O'Rourke, foul. Fouls on Gardner, first personal. Uh, John, as I was going to mention earlier, uh, I talked with Luke Starr. And I asked him if, he, if Kesnick or Matter were Class A players. He said, no, they're just regular good high school players. They're looking at tonight. Dan O'Rourke was on the free throw line, hit 35 points in a game broadcast earlier this year on Sports 36 when they beat Brookfield Central. Set a school record in that game. There he is. O'Rourke, six foot three, a senior here at Sussex Hamilton. Hits the second free throw. So now Sussex Hamilton down six to two, and they go into a man-to-man -man full court defense. No offensive on Gardner trying to pass it down to Matter, losing it out of bounds. 523 remaining in the first period of play here at Sussex Hamilton Sports 36. John Bartell along with Jim Smallins and Terry Peterson, our statistician. Gardner on a steal. Ripped it right away from O'Rourke that time. Poor ball handling, and they're going to have to get with it. At Sussex this point, it looks as if East is showing more poise. They, they have no fear whatsoever. They're going right at them. On the outside, trying to drive it down. Kesenick puts it up. Battle for the board. Comes down with a young power. Young power does it all for this team. He's got to be all three from conference this year. Chimes from the outside for the first field goal of the night for this Chargers team. Looking down deep. Matter. All on. Now the team is trying to swap buckets. Patterson. Well, he better not go one on five. Loses it. Gardner rips it away. McMullen. Foul coming up. Oh, is it, it looked like a nice block, but a foul. And the foul on Paul Tobner. Well, Paul Tobner did it before, Jim. He couldn't do it this time, though. John, that O'Rourke, number, I'm sorry, that uh, number 25. Uh, McMullen. M McMullen for uh, sophomore is really a gutsy player. He went down, got clobbered. Now he's standing on the free throw line as if nothing happened to him. You know, his kind of style of play kind of reminds me of Mark Moore of Dominican. Started as a sophomore at Dominican last year, now a junior and averaging about 50% from the floor. But you wouldn't know that he was a sophomore. And there's McMullen, the sophomore. Hitting now 10-4 for Brookfield East. Jump pass down to O'Rourke. O'Rourke likes to shoot it. Oh, that one came down with a little moisture on it from the clouds up above. What an arc. Oh. Gardner. Wilcox back with the ball. They'll work it. Kesenick. He's been hot. Follow. Wilcox. Perry Wilcox gets his first field goal of the game and a six-point lead again for Sussex Hamilton. Uh, if they keep shooting like this, it's going to be hard to stop. Jump back, pass back to Patterson. No good. And controlling the boards again, Andy Matter. I'll tell you, this kid is six foot seven, one of the taller players in the Braveland Conference, not quite as tall as Dave Nussbaum over at Homestead. He can get up there. Good college prospect for some team. Goes after the ball. You know, John, that's the only aspect of the game that worries Lutker. That's rebounding. And they, they're getting killed on the boards at this time. Look at this. Coming up with the ball. Gardner hits it. <laughs> nice shot by Andy Gardner. And it's now 14-6 in Sussex-Hamilton. 
Yeah, Sussex probably gonna, should Sussex have gonna to need a timeout at this time, John. I was gonna say Sussex Hamilton yeah, <laughs> should call something to get themselves reorganized from the outside. Young Barr. Uh, he's the only guy who can put the ball in the hole right now. 14 to 8. Brookfield East. Some problems gonna get in. But knowing Lutka, he's gonna save all of his timeouts for the last quarter. They might need him. Wilcox tries to jump it around O'Rourke. Boy, what a percentage this Brookfield East team is shooting now. And when they miss the basket, they're right there to follow it up. 16 to 8. O'Rourke drives baseline. Tapped out. Here comes McClellan. Top for the races. Wilcox. That's a ghost shadow shot. Nothing there as he went up with it. And Gardner. And look out, Mama. 18 to 8. Time out now. Finally, Lutka's got to call it. And listen to those Brookfield East fans, Jim. Well, they're, they're really cheering them on. And you can see right there, they're extremely happy at this point. Although, John, at this point, uh, Lutka couldn't afford not to take a timeout. You know, when you fall back 10 points, you better, you'd better re recoup right off. Let's try to pick up some of that action on that last one. This kid, McMullen, we talked about a sophomore and what he can do for a team. His team is up 18-8. Watch his pass. Well, nice pass, but it oh. mail got through, but Wilcox forgot to deliver it. So, 2-19 remaining of this first period of play here at Sussex Hamilton. Well, as we said, Sports 36 doing our best to bring you the best in area sports. Next Tuesday night, we've got another good one coming up, Jim. We're going to be out at West Dallas Central. And Central and Melka and Spurka and all the gang out there hosts Cudahave. And Jerry Sullivan will be out there with myself. And uh, that's great English, huh, for a uh, well, former English student. But that's going to be a good one next Tuesday night live on Sports 36. West Dallas Central hosting Cudahy at West Dallas Central. 18 to 8, 2.15 now. Clock starting to roll again. O'Rourke trying to move it down to Kroenberg. Kroenberg has been unable to do anything and Terry Youngbauer has been the only guy been able to hit anything he's got six points now it's 18-10 Brookfield East look out oh, man eight. where did Andy Gardner come from he was wide open there was nobody back there to play defense Gardner now with a total of eight points already and you're gonna have to give that assist to uh, McMullen he's alert there well, it must be nice to be a coach. You know you're going to have a guy like this around for two more years. He can't go hardship. No, no. Not in high school. But I tell you, Hamilton looks as if they are, are ready for that zone now. Trying to get it back up. Tobner blocked. Rejected by Matter. Foul. Who's it on? I think they call it on Matter. Wilcox. Wilcox. Well, for Wilcox, his first personal foul. Understand that's the second team foul. 129 left in this first period. 10 point lead for Brookfield East right now, Jim. As we look at that replay here, he goes up. It's blocked by by Matter. By Matter. And then um, it's blocked again. Uh, he's done that a lot this year. Uh, oh, six, he, seven. You've got to use your guy. height. O'Rourke from the outside. Well, I'll tell you, if these guys start getting hot. They're going to be right back in the ball game. They're not down too bad right now, 20 to 12 here in the first quarter. Gardner trying to get it down. Finally picked up Wilcox. Wilcox will shoot it and hit it. <laughs> All right, battle now. Wayne Battle in the lineup for Sussex Hamilton as they got to get something going. Battle six foot one. He's a junior forward. He's quite a leaper for his size. He's a transfer student from New York City. Well, he's from the state of New York. I'm not sure about the New York City part. Well, anyone from New York always said they're from New York City. <laughs> Don't want to say you're from Albany or somewhere, huh? <laughs> O'Rourke tries to drive baseline. I think Matter just laid him back that time. Didn't want to pick up a foul. O'Rourke knows where the basket is. I'd say he's only 6'3", playing a forward, but in high school, that's, that's a pretty fair size for a forward. Oh, yeah. But he's doing it. Young power on the seal. Take it down. Foul coming up. No basket, but a foul is on Kessenick. You know, John, as they're in the man-for-man -man full court press, a young Bauer stepped right in on the side by the 10-second line and picked that ball off. Well, there we had a good look at it. Yeah, Kessenick did pick up his first personal foul right there, and shooting will be Terry Youngbauer. And young Bauer is so far from the season is shooting pretty well. I think he's shooting what? Uh, from the field free throw line, 73.7%. 
that is fairly respectable. Oh, I think so, John. We have seen this young man three times so far this season. I think it's the first time we've ever had one team. But again, we're trying to pick the best games available. And the Sussex Hamilton has been one of the best teams around, so you've got to go with it. Young Bauer, one of the better guards we have had to see in the, the, the good fortune to see so far this year. And we've seen some good ones. Jeff Askew yeah. at Washington, one of them. I would agree with you, although I, I'll have to include Dandridge in that. He, he plays guard on defense. And this sophomore, McMullen, he really impresses me. Look at that pass. There. Nice pass, Gardner. <laughs> the assist from McMullen. It's 24-16, 18 seconds left first period. Young Bauer take it down. Trying to look for battle. Blocked off, finally gets out high to Patterson. Already O'Rourke. O'Rourke can shoot it. Not this time, though. Matter. Going to have to watch it. Four seconds left with the ball up. Two seconds, one second. He didn't even see the clock. Oh. Well, he didn't see the clock that time, but they still have a very respectable eight-point lead and the score. At the end of one period of play here from Sussex Hamilton is Brookfield East 24 and Sussex Hamilton 16. Kind of surprised, Jim? Oh, quite surprised. You know, John has a, there he is right there, McMullen. He jumps to shoot. Pass to Gardner. Gardner banks it in. Oh, he could miss that one. I just can't help but uh, be marvel at, at how, his, how his, his composure just stands out so far. Although, John, the first quarter, I, I really think Hamilton was shocked because they didn't think that East would come out and run at him. He thought they would sit back, pass, 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 and then go in. But East has challenged the basket, has gone to it. I look for Hamilton to come out this time ready for them. You know, Lubsdorf didn't say that before the game, that they'd be running. No, he, he surprised us too. He said he's going to control this game underneath. Jim, next Saturday, the 24th of February, Saturday night, live from Homestead High School, will be the final game of the Homestead Girls Regional Basketball Tournament. I'll tell you, there's some fine area teams this year in girls basketball. So you be with us next Saturday night. We'll be coming to you from Homestead High School, the final game of the Homestead Girls Regional. That'll be a live game. All right, starting off the second period, trying to jump down McMullen. Now they were looking for it that time. O'Rourke picks it off. Here they come. The Chargers down by eight points. 24 and 16. The outside Patterson, no. Wilcox to the board. You know, for 6-3, that, that Gardner really gets in there. This is McMullen. Good shot. Good camera work down below. Gardner back out to McMullen. He's open. Might as well take it. J.C. McMullen has four points in the game. Got to find out what J.C. stood for. And even Coach Loopsdorf didn't know. I would just call him J.C. Jack Charles or something. 7-14 left in this first half of, of play. Trying to work it around the outside. The Chargers. This is Young Bauer. Bounce pass down deep. And for the first time, Tomner gets into it. Mark. That's his first two, and it's now 26 18. Starting to come back a little bit. The Chargers. Looks like the defense starting to tighten up also for Sussex Hamilton. They try to feed it down deep. The matter, and Battle comes up with it. Battle looks like he's going to go all the way. One man to beat. Kasanik. That's a blocking foul. He was not set. So Kesnick will pick up his second personal foul. There's Dan Kesnick. Let's try to pick that up again as Wayne Battle came up with that loose ball. Didn't that position, Jim? No, he, he had part of that shoulder there, but he just didn't get in, in front completely. Although right. that was a smart play by uh, uh, Battle. But instead of uh, Battle moving toward the basket, he turned his body away so that the official wouldn't think that he charged into him. Battle shooting 57% from the Lafayette free throw line so far this year. About 48% from the field. As a team, Sussex Hamilton shooting approximately oh, 68%. Now he doesn't connect on the second one, but within five comes the Chargers. This is J.C. McMullen. In the corner, Matter. Matter looking down deep, finds Gardner. Gardner puts it up. Nobody there but the white and red of Sussex Hamilton. Here they come. Well, it looks like uh, Hamilton moving to the zone defense has now equalized the rebounding strength. Uh, they're really getting the rebounds now. Kind of wonder what Coach Lutka is going to be looking forward to next year as the steal comes up. Coming up with the loose change was McMullen. 
four seniors starting here for Sussex Hamilton. Oh, bounce pass. That uh, one was meant for Jabbar, but he wasn't in the field uh, right He now. had a good idea. Uh, the man was open. Uh, it was just a little bit too close to him. Now we get a good shot at uh, Young Bauer. Three seniors, one sophomore and one junior starting for Brookfield East. They had a couple of good players coming back then. <laughs> Shooting from the outside. Hitting that one, Paul Topner, he's got four. Now 26-21. And still within shouting distance. Sussex Hamilton, long way to go yet. 5.34 left in this first half. What a change of direction. Oh. I'll tell you, this McMullen is surprising a lot of people this year. From the outside, Young Bar trying to take control. No good, matter with the rebound. This kid McMullen has now got six points in the game. Might have himself eight. No good. Loose ball coming up with it as a ward. Charges now. Going to fall back a little bit. They look in the corner. This is Young Bar. Tries the baseline. Battle. Foul. Battle is going up with a shot, but a foul on Andy Gardner. He's not too happy. There's Battle. There's the man perpetrating the incident. <laughs> you see Gardner's reaction to that, Jim. Oh, yeah. He was a little surprised he got the pass, I believe. And then even more surprised when he went up and had uh, the ball knocked out of the field house. That'll be shooting a pair now. <laughs> Two out of three from the free throw line tonight. 28-22, Sussex Hamilton still down by six. Just under five minutes left in the first half. Battle hits again. You know, all season long, uh, East has been coming back on free throws. It looks like uh, Hamilton now is coming back on free throws. Jim, they've been in overtime, what, four different times so far this year. Brookfield East has done pretty good in those games, but again, they kind of like to clean it up in regulation time if they could. Well, you know, once this year, 105 points were scored by Hamilton. If he right. falls north, 105 to 92. I don't know if they can keep up this pace. They're not going to reach it, but I don't know. Brookfield East is putting on a show now. As matter connected on that last one. Battle tried to put it up in 15. No good. And here come the Spartans. This is Wilcox. Perry Wilcox. Shot to McMullen. Looking down deep for Matter. Alley oop, but a foul. Number 22, Dan O'Rourke. First personal on O'Rourke. <laughs> Boy, what a rock he's been all year oh, for them. Yes. There he goes. McMullen passes it high. O'Rourke spots it. Backs into uh, the big guy, Matter. His body was all over him. Wilcox on the inbound. McMullen, he'll shoot it. No good. Battle for the rebound, but a foul is going to be coming up on who? Over Wilcox. The Harry Wilcox picks up his second personal foul. You know, John, it, it, it's no. so important that as, as we take a look at this replay to step inside and, and get that uh, inside position because the man jumping with you can't help but reach over the shoulders. Brookfield East 30, Sussex Hamilton 23, Sussex Hamilton in an overflow crowd here again. Now they've seen a good one here so far. Kind of a surprise. But in, earlier this year, you have to remember Brookfield East beat Sussex Hamilton to give the Chargers their only loss in the Braveland Conference this year. And that by the score of 62-60. And that one right down to the wire. Oh, in fact, after that game, uh, Luke Starf went to the middle of court and threw both hands up. <laughs> four minutes. Four minutes left in the first half. 30 to 25. Brookfield East with the lead. Bounce pass to Gardner. Goes up. Oh, he, dropped, he drew Battle in the air. And Battle tried to go for a ride on the back of Gardner, and uh, there was no chair back there. Now, that was very smart. He saw them coming at him, so he just ducked down <laughs> and drew the foul. That's called a slow motion out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Five point lead, still holding on. Brookfield East, they've got the ball. First personal foul in battle. This is Kessinick. He likes to shoot from there. Got it. Kessinick has six points. His first basket here in the second quarter. Now 30 25. That's seven point lead, building back up for Spartans. You know, John, Kessinick's only shooting about 35%, and yet. He, he hasn't missed too much tonight. I think one shot at the most. He's not afraid to put that ball up either. He's going right to it. He's got a foul in the middle here. Looks like Gardner's the man. Well, Matter was saying, how about a little traveling down there? But no. 
Yep, Gardner, number 51. I tell you, Jim, that's third personal foul on Gardner. Oh. And a bonus now as Hamilton goes into the bonus situation. Gardner's going to sit out for a while. They're going to bring in one of their high jumpers, a guy who, along with Kesenik, is the high jumper on the track team. They don't drop off very much as, as they put uh, Topner in. Wally Soutoff is the man coming in. 6'2", 168, senior forward. That's good practice for you in the offseason as Patterson connects on the first one at high jumping. Well, I don't know. If I was a track coach, I would, I would think that basketball was good for a uh, high jumper. Second free throw by Patterson is good. He's got his first two points of the game. Now 32-27, a five-point lead for Brookfield East. They're coached by Laverne Lubstorff, Rich Lutko, the head coach here at Sussex Hamilton. Down deep, Kessinick. Kessinick's putting it up tonight. He draws a foul from Tobner. For Paul Tobner, his second personal. Looking at a referee, Tom Henderson. He's not the same Tom Henderson with the Washington Bullets, sorry. Yes, Nick, as we remembered, as we mentioned before, his older brother, Jim, was a fine athlete. I believe he was a defensive back, as memory recalls, a defensive back on the football team, and he had to play center or forward, had to play on that front line. He was about six foot five, and his brother is six foot five. Got to run to the family. I could use all of them, John. I have an eighth grade team. I'd love to have them on my team. <laughs> How many seven footers you've got? Yeah. Now 34 27. Brookfield East still with that lead. Try to get it down to Battle. Battle was the contact. Oh, he stepped on the line. Wayne Battle called for the turnover that time. Well, he likes to make things happen, but made something happen on the side for Brookfield East before. Here's the replay of that one. Ah, the referee saw it. Come back to live action. This is McMullen over to Soutoff. The corner, get it to Wilcox. Soutoff playing quite out high. McMullen, no good. On the rebound, but a foul, Matter. Well, Andy Matter just picked up his second personal of the game. That's going to send into the bonus situation. Now, John, you know, a lot of big men feel that they're bigger than everyone else. They can just reach. Usually when you reach in, as Matter did, the officials catch it and call a foul on him. And they're going to send Tim Patterson to the free throw line for the second time tonight, shooting the bonus. He's two for two so far, and only two points in the game. Now he's got it. He's shooting 77% from the free throw line so far this year, and that's the tops on this Hamilton team. That is not bad at all. Oh, they, have, they have about three guys in the 70s. 70, 73, and 77. Well, that'll bring his average down just a touch. But it's 34-28, six-point lead for the Spartans. This is McMullen again. Down to south off, looking to matter, batted out of bounds. Good heads of play over there by the Chargers. That was a nice block by Patterson. You know, he's he's uh, concentrating on blocking that pass going into matter there. The only two losses for the Spartans so far this year to Menominee Falls North. Falls North with some fine shooters, including the league's high scorer and Mike Ehler, and here's a steal by Youngbar. Youngbauer's going to take it down. Anybody. Nice move. Terry Youngbauer just took it all the way on the steal. And that young man is a fine player. Brings his team back to four. 34-30. 2-14 left in this first half. In the corner, Wilcox. Spartan's not afraid to put that ball up, Jim. No, Jim. they're not. I'm not quite sure I understand what uh, the coach uh, from East was saying when he's talking about he won't go to the basket. He charged shot. that basket like, like a bull. And that time, Tobner tried to get a shot back in, but no good. McMullen, the shortest man on the court right now with the ball. 145 left first half. McMullen won't shoot it. He's got a work right on top of him as he comes out and playing actually a guard position off this 2-1-2. Baseline, no good matter. Kessinick with the ball. Turn around, no good. Still loose, Young Bar. Got a man down deep, O'Rourke. Oh, too long. Paul. Well, that pass went to the end zone that time. <laughs> Incomplete. No points off of that. 127 left. Spartans get the ball back. They lead it by six. 36 to 30. Well, they're keeping it close, but I don't know if they're going to get any 80 points this game. Hamilton likes to keep it up there if they can, but I don't know. Wilcox with the ball outside of McMullen. Jump pass back, Wilcox, no good. Rebound, Matter in the middle. 
That was just a matter of uh, matter putting it in. Oh, he he puts it in. Battle holds it up for Taubner. Over to Youngbauer, who'll try to baseline, reaching a foul. Fouls on Kessenick for Kessenick. Third personal foul, so he and Gardner each have three fouls. Kessenick is not too happy about that one, Jim. No. You know, both teams playing zones. I, I, I am surprised that they're picking up as many fouls, although Hamilton is playing against that zone that East is, that 2-3 East is using. They're using man-to-man -man principles against it. They believe they can drive, and that's what they're doing. Substitution, Kessenick would come out. They'll give up a little bit of height. They've got Gardner and Kessenick on the free, on the bench right now as Youngbauer connects for his 11th point of the night and his third free throw in a row. Into the game is Mike Kuhn, number 31 for Brookfield East. He's 6'1", 170, a junior. Connecting on the second is Youngbauer. Now within six again is 55 seconds left in the first half. Six-point lead for the Spartans. But I'd like to add to that before this half's over. Rebound. Matter leaning for the ball. Who's got it? Patterson. Here come the Chargers. They're on the run. Can't put it up. Right on top of him is Kuhn. Beat it in the middle. Tobner. Tobner. Oh, wow. All alone. Nice play that time. A good pass outside from O'Rourke down to Tobner. And Paul Tobner now with six points. 38-34. Brookfield East. East hasn't used any of their timeouts in the first period, or the first half at all. Only one timeout for Sussex Hamilton, and I think that one kept it alive for them. Souter trying to save it. Only the young bar. Loose ball, jump ball. They're going to jump it up. Why, why a jump ball here, Jim? Did they both have a hold? No, as we look at that uh, young bar, he puts it right up between both of those men, right between the arms. <coughs> Kind of looked like it might have been a foul underneath, but it was just a jump ball, the referee call. We might have a jump over. No, they're going to say Battle got his hand out of it, knocked it out of bounds. So, with eight seconds left in the first half, McMullen's going to have to get that ball up quick. He didn't see the clock at the end of the first period, but they're going to have to get it up now. Wilcox, McMullen, and it's blocked by Tobner. Almost put up by Battle, but that's going to end the first half. Oh, they've been going at it hot and heavy in this game and they have not been letting John, up. You mentioned a barn burner. We're now only four point difference. At the end of the first period, it was Brookfield East 24, Sussex Hamilton 16. And at that point, as you can see, an eight point lead. Well, Hamilton coming back there in the second period. Now Brookfield East leading at half 38 to 34, only four points. John, I, I look at that uh, offense that Hamilton is using. They, they have the idea that you cut a lead down methodically. You don't attack it right away. You slowly play your game, go and set up on your offense and work at it. Too many high school teams think that you have to gain those points back right away. But when you just eat away slowly, you'll find yourself right back in the ball game. Two of the top players for Brookfield East went out with fouls there in the first half. Dan Kessenick and Andy Gardner each have three personal fouls. That may tell a story later in the game. Well, knowing Luke Starf, though, he will, he'll start him in the second quarter, and as long as they, they don't pick up that other one, he'll go with it. You see, he has a philosophy that you can play the whole game and not pick up one more foul extra. Let's try to run down some of the unofficial scoring so far here in the first half. Leading the way, Andy Gardner, who went out with three fouls. He has ten points in the first half. Eight points for Dan Kessenick. Eight points for Perry Wilcox. Six for Andy Matter. And J.C. McMullen has six. All five starters have scored, and all have scored at least six points. So some pretty balanced play so far for the Brookfield East Spartans. Sussex Hamilton Chargers, who lead the conference, and Brookfield East one game behind. Terry Youngbauer leading the way so far with 12 points in the game. Dan O'Rourke has eight points, uh, 10 points rather. Wayne Battle with three, Tim Patterson with three, and Paul Taubner with a total of six points. So the only the center, the starting center for Sussex Hamilton has not scored so far, Jeff Kronberg. And I have to say he has been rather ineffective so far because not only has he not scored, but he hasn't taken any shots. But he has not been able to keep Matter and Kesemek and Gardner and whoever else away from those boards. Well, you know, uh, he's playing uh, right behind the man instead of on the ball side or instead of uh, fronting them. Jim, one point I just want to mention. This is the last game that Barry Mano will be coaching in the high school ranks. Barry Mano uh, refereeing from the Mano family. His father, I think, is uh, Rudy. 
And uh, I think he's had one of his brothers is in the officiating of business, and uh, they do everything from high school. They did. Uh, he worked on the Creighton game last night, I understand. Oh yeah. In Omaha, Nebraska, and again tonight's the last high school game that he's going to referee. So. We try to get a camera on him later on, and he's one of the better referees in this area. John, the, the high school ranks will sorely miss him. He's a tremendous official. He talks to the players. He keeps them happy. He doesn't allow anyone to get angry out there. You know, he he really communicates. You know, for a guy his age, communicating with a teenager. You know what they say today? You can't communicate with teenagers. I I think here's a guy that really disproves that theory. Jim, I tell you, we have seen a lot of referees and a lot of different referees have worked all these games we've worked so far this year on Sports 36. But let's congratulate now and thank all the referees for the good job they've done. They have not let get any games get out of hand that we have seen. I have not heard of any problems. You hear about some problems in some other cities, but in Milwaukee area referees, the whole southeast Wisconsin area, do just an outstanding job. Yes, they, they really do. And in all the conferences, as the entire city of Milwaukee saw last week, Two tremendous officials kept the game under control and didn't let it let it get out of hand. And they're doing the same thing tonight. Gentlemen, our hats are off to you. This is Sports 36 coming to you tonight from Sussex Hamilton with a score at halftime is Brookfield East 38, Sussex Hamilton 34. We'll be back in just a moment. When you're looking for a real alternative, top quality programming without interruption, look no further than public television, WMVT Milwaukee. Well, there's a young lady, one of the very many nice things about Sussex Hamilton, a girl named Julie, one of the pom-pom girls and cheerleaders along the sideline. And at halftime, the score is Brookfield East 38, Sussex Hamilton 34, and with about 30 seconds before the start of the second half, the Chargers finally out on the floor, and Jim, you find yourself down if you're Rich Ludka, down by four points at halftime. They seem to have taken a long time there in the uh, in the locker room at halftime. What do you think Coach Ludka was talking about? Well, John, uh, I'm sure they were talking about how they're going to set their alignment on defense in order to box the pass from coming into the big guys, Kessnick and Matter. And on offense, they're going to go ahead and put that point guard out there with uh, Youngblood on the side. Uh, they've been successful at that baseline pass. I can't see them not using that until East comes and challenges that. So instead of the East using the pattern, I believe that Hamilton is going to pattern the offense at this point. The tall men for Brookfield East, they've got the height advantage with Matter at 6'7 and Kessinick at 6'5. But again, most of the shooting, most of the scoring seems to be coming from the outside. Wilcox and Kessinick and McMullen have all chimed in from the outside. Well, all except the big boy, Matter. He's, he's been tough in there. Uh, there's Laverne Lugstorff, head coach here, or over at uh, Brookfield East, I should say. His team 9-2 and two in the Braveland Conference. He's not whole throwing in the tower, just hanging on to it. He's got a whole half to go, and we're ready to start it off. <laughs> Set the lineups for you. First of all, for Brookfield East, J.C. McMullen is number 25. 13 with the ball is Perry Wilcox. Andy Gardner in the lineup now in the second half. He has three fouls. But his shot goes off. Matter puts it in, and Andy Matter's got himself a bucket to start it off here for the Brookfield East Spartans. The other forward is Dan Kessenick, number 45. 
for Sussex Hamilton. 14 with the ball, Terry Youngbauer. His running mate at guard, Tim Patterson, number 12. Shooting the ball, Dan O'Rourke, no good. The other players in there. 44 is Paul Tobner, and 42 is Jeff Kronberg. So there you have it, the men starting off the second half. On the outside, Kessenick. Got McMullen on the right side. Young ball right on top of him. Looking for the foul. Kessenick puts it up. No good. Rebound. Wilcox. This is Gardner. Gardner likes to take that rhythm bounce before he shoots. Comes up with nothing but air in the hands of Paul Taubner that time, though. Shovel pass from Young Bauer to O'Rourke. On the drive. Puts it up. No good. Hitting the floor was any matter, but good. Good board work that time. Dan O'Rourke. O'Rourke now with 12 points. 40-36, Brookfield East up yet by four. Sussex Hamilton starting to step out, and J.C. McMullen clangs from the outside. Let's get McMullen is starting to hit pretty well now. He's got eight points. On the rebound, Matter hands it off to McMullen. 42-36, we're underway here in the second half of play. Hits the East, but it's dominant on that board. East has led all the way, Jim, and they're going right through the basket. They're going to have a foul offensive. Yes, Kessenick has four. <laughs> Let's try to pick up some of the play at the other end, but Kessenick, that is going to hurt. He's got four. Does the loop store pull him out, or does he keep him in for a while? Well, he's going to keep him in for a while. Well, there's one thing for sure. He can't help them sitting on the bench. Chargers might be wise to direct their offense towards Kessenick's side of the court. We'll see if they do that. Right now they're on the opposite side as they try to get in. O'Rourke, Matter right on top of him with a rebound. Tobner fights, drafts it out. He last touch. <laughs> Just the mere height of Matter caused that ball to go out. McMullen, young ball right on top of him. The sophomore. Oh, look, looking pretty good. Wilcox, bounce pass down to Gardner in the corner. <laughs> Wilcox was passing it down to one of the Munchkins that time, and nobody got it, but Sussex Hamilton on the inbound. Here's that matchup again. Young Bauer. And a foul as McMullen caught on the trap. Well, I was almost ready to say, here's a matchup again between uh, McMullen and Young Bauer. And all of a sudden, there's a foul on McMullen. He's coming down, Who's takes that? him to his right, runs him right into... Uh, Tobner, and uh, he hit the floor pretty good that time. Out of high, that's Kronberg. In the corner, Terry Youngbauer. He was second team all Braveland Conference last year. He's got to be first team this year. He is that yeah, good. He's tough. Driving, Kronberg, his first shot tonight. Off the rim, no good, and here come the Spartans. They lead it by six, uh, six points. 42-36 and a foul coming up. Don Sussex Hamilton. Who's that, Young Bauer? So here's that matchup between Young Bauer and McMullen. This time, Young Bauer fouls him. It's Terry Young Bauer's first personal foul in the game. 5-11, left here. There's Terry Young Bauer. Six foot one, 160, a senior. From the outside, no good. And again, the Chargers trying to run the ball on the Spartans. They like to do this. Young Bauer hits. Boy, this kid can shoot. He's got 14. His average is right around 17 points a game. Also, is, uh, as is O'Rourke's. Right among the top 10 scorers in the conference, along with Andy Matter. Mike Ayler of Menominee Falls North, the leading shooter. Rebound, O'Rourke. Steal. Gardner puts it up. No good. Fighting for the board. Last touch by who? Well, Gardner's mad, but his team's got the ball. That was a massive effort about uh, uh, that young bar play. He got that ball. Look at him. He's outside. He goes back. And here he comes in there. No, not young Bauer. Taubner. He got up there and deflected that shot. Turn around. Shooting. No good. Still the rebound. Perry Wilcox. As he tries to put it up, he right gets on. it. He's going to get the three-point play. And, boy, those Brookfield East fans know that if they win tonight, they're in a tie for first place in the Braveland Conference. Watch that shot. Just went around the rim. 
And this is where Luke Starf has scored most of his points. Right in the center, right in the middle. Oh, as Eddie Doucette says, down in the land of the Giants. And bango. <laughs> I promise not to do that again, yeah. folks. <laughs> Wilcox connecting again. He's got 11 points. Perry Wilcox, 423 left here in the third period. 45-38, a seven-point lead now for the Spartans. Kerry Youngbauer with the ball, looking deep for O'Rourke. O'Rourke on the baseline, in the face of matter. <laughs> Youngbauer has 14, or O'Rourke rather has 14. Youngbauer has 14 to lead the way so far. Kopner has six, three for Patterson and three for Battle. That's the way the scoring goes of the Chargers so far. 45-40, and trying to put it up. We're going to have an up and down. Well, they call traveling. Uh, I don't know about that one, John. He just made a double pump there. He couldn't get in, so he backs up, double pumps it. He was still in the air. He couldn't tell. Well, I think the referee has said his foot left the, foot left the floor. So they've got to do it. Good job on the camera work that time. Here comes McMullen on a steal. One man to beat. Lays it in. Overlays. Still with the board. Kessinick, but a foul. Who? That was going to be against Brookfield East. We'll see who they call it on. That was... I think it's on Wilcox. That was number 13, right. Harry Wilcox picks up his third personal foul. So Wilcox and Gardner each with three, and Kesemick with four personal fouls. And we still have 3.33 left in the third quarter. 45-40, Bookfield East with the lead. On defense right now. Nine and two in the conference. On the rebound, Kesemick. He's got four fouls, but he's not... Uh, He's not afraid to go after that uh, ball, Jim. No, he, he's a believer. He's a player. Uh, I would call him a blue chip, although uh, Luke Sarf didn't call him a blue chipper. From the outside, Kessinick. Boy, you pointed out his shooting stats earlier in the game that it weren't, they weren't too hot, but uh, he's coming alive tonight. Kessinick now with 10. Young Bauer from way out on top. Terry Youngbauer with 16 points, and he and O'Rourke are single-handedly keeping Hamilton in. Well, just uh, recently, he almost broke uh, Dan O'Rourke's record of 35 points. He put in 34. From the outside, McMullen, he can shoot it. Rebound, oh, Youngbauer. Right on top is Wilcox, but he's got to watch out. He has three fouls. He's going to look over to Patterson. Timmy Patterson on the corner to O'Rourke. O'Rourke trying to drive. They're going to say a blocking foul on Gardner, and Gardner might get called with a technical if he doesn't calm down. This young man is, uh, gets involved in it, had his leg sticking out. Right, he, he stuck that left knee out there. But that may be crucial. He's we now have about you. three of them with three fouls. Uh, was it two with three or three with three? Well, we've got two men with four. four now, Kessinick and Gardner. Gardner oh, yeah. just picked up two his fourth. Yeah, that may be crucial in that, in that last quarter. And you know, everything heats up in the last quarter. The tensions rise. Everyone's muscles become extremely tense. The nerves become tense. And at that point, that's when it's crucial. Next week, <laughs> next week, Tuesday, 20th of February, we're going to be on live at West Dallas Central High School as West Dallas Central host Cudahy. Packers will be out there, and I'll be out there with Jerry Sullivan. And Jerry will be working on the 24th of February next Saturday night. Live from Homestead High School, the final game of the Homestead Girls Regional Basketball Tourney. And then on March 3rd, well, Jim, we're going to have the whole crew out at uh, West Dallas Hale for the West Dallas Hale Regional. The final game of that regional, the boys tournament. And uh, Jerry Sullivan, yourself, I'll be out there and... Uh, you never know, Washington High School might make it to that regional. Yeah, that'll be quite that'll be quite an interesting affair. But uh, you know, John, as as soon as the last game is played in the season, all the records are out. It's a brand new season. Anybody can get bounced at any time. Teams come up with big surprises in those playoffs. Underneath, Young Power. Well, he went up. Tall Silver was there, but he put it right in Matter's face. That's just about the closest Sussex Hamilton has come in a long time within 3, 47, 44. Wilcox from the outside hits it. Sussex Hamilton looking down to run. Cobner is out the corner. Now he gets covered underneath. 154 left in the third period. Young power over to Patterson. He's got Battle who's back in the game now over in the corner. Battle, Tobner, and O'Rourke still in there. 
Pass outside to Young Bauer underneath. The last touch, O'Rourke, and they're going to say an offensive foul on Dan O'Rourke, his third personal. So he's the first one with three. Watch it again. He gets right in there, although uh, from that shot, it looked like he might have had a little room to get by there. He fouled Andy Matter. Still not in the bonus yet for the Spartans. 49-44. Sussex Hamilton down by five as Bruce Lee staying out on top. Matter with the ball, hauls down the rebound. He's doing the job, but he's fouled by Tovner. Paul Tovner picks up his third, so suddenly two Sussex Hamilton players have three. Tovner and O'Rourke. And again, you have to watch those. You can't overemphasize those. There's Laverne Lubstorff for uh, Brookfield East. Usually he's a very relaxed guy. We talked about the game when they beat uh, Sussex Hamilton earlier this year, 62-60. And he was described as going bananas. Oh, he really was. In the middle of the floor, both hands waving high. It's a big game. There's Andy Matter on the free throw line for the first time tonight. He now has nine points. Looking for the second. In the act of shooting. No good. On the rebound, Kessler with almost call for a foul, but O'Rourke comes down with it. Young Bauer looking for battle. And Kessler comes up with a loose ball. Over to Gardner. They'll drop it off to J.C. McMullen. Back to a six-point lead again all of a sudden for the Brookfield East Spartans. Well, if they keep this all the way, if they don't change the strategy they're working with now, it's working. They're all right. You know, Johnny, looking at their season record, they haven't missed, they, they haven't lost many games that they've, that they've been ahead for this long. They usually win those games while they lead. Young Bauer with the ball after Matters missed shot. Patterson, no good. With a rebound is Gardner. Hitting the floor is McMullen, no foul called. McMullen get the ball back and Young Bauer right on top of him. But it's McMullen can handle the ball pretty good, too. The only thing he doesn't do is sell popcorn, I'll bet. Well, he does everything else. Gardner from the outside, no good. Follows his old rebound, smart basketball. Matters right there, blocked nice by Tobner, but put in, Kesselnik. Dan Kesselnik has 12, and I tell you, Tobner's looking good with these blocks, but coming right back. Guess Terry. who, John? Guess who? Uh, he young Bauer. 20 points for that young man. Keeping him in, three seconds left in the period. Matter puts it in at the buzzer. Yes. Eight-point lead again for Brookfield East, and that might be a big psychological advantage for Brookfield East going into the fourth quarter. Well, I, I'm afraid I have to agree with you, John. They have you know, they indicated before every game that they have this, they usually come out a winner. You look at what they led by at halftime. By four points, they double that here in the third quarter. Now lead 54-46. This last eight minutes, and there's the Hamilton Charger, the emblem of the school. They're their sign, I guess you'd have to call it. But we go into the final eight minutes, and Brookfield East is shouting, we're number one. And they're uh, actually in second place. They might be in first place and in a tie with Sussex Hamilton after this game. Could very well be. But I'm sure on the mind of Lutke, you take that, you take a good look at that shot now. Comes in, misses, gets his own rebound, puts it up again, and it's rebounded off. The big guy throws it up, and it's blocked by Tauber. But Wilcox was right there to dump it back in, and Matter hit one at the end of the quarter. As some of the fans here can't tell who they're for right now. Well, he's gotten all three tips. Let's see if he gets this one. Matter. Well, he got it, but Patterson comes up with it. Battle going down, lays it in. Well, that's a beautiful way for Sussex Hamilton to start off this fourth quarter. They pull back within 6, 54, 48. We're in the last stanza of this game, so hold on to your seats. Don't leave now. Speaking of holding on, John, East is good at holding on when they have the lead near the end of the game. Nice pass. Kesenek down deep from Gardner. And back up by eight is the Spartans. Or are the Spartans, if you prefer. Patterson outside of Young Bauer. Young Bauer with 20 points. Dan O'Rourke with 14 so far. And those two gentlemen really done a fine job. And a jump ball. Jump ball called by referee oh. Tom Henderson. Well, number 25, Mike Mullen, reached in. And from the official's call, he said a jump ball. Although I would say it looked like a foul on McMullen. But it's a good thing I'm not calling him. They've got a timeout. Rich Lutgood calls it. 
So a timeout, 56-48, Sussex Hamilton down by eight. Brookfield leads wide and high right now with 7.18 left in the game. Let's try to get a shot. There is Rich Lutka of Sussex Hamilton. Very passive right now. Laverne Loopsdorf somewhere down at the bottom of that file charting some plays for his team. And maybe we can get one of our cameras to show Barry Mano, not Barry Manilow, the singer, but oh. Barry Mano, the referee who is again refereeing his final high school game of his career tonight. I guess he just wants to stick with the college. So there's Tom Henderson. He's the other referee, so we'll get our cameraman busy and point out the right guy if we can. There he is right at center court. Yeah. Yeah, John, you know, an interesting uh, uh, sidelight here. Both coaches have not been known to become hysterical in a game. They both act as calm as can be. You're, you're looking at uh, Mano there, right? And again, we wish him well as he leaves the high school ranks, stays in the uh, college, and wouldn't be surprised to see him maybe go pro sometime. Maybe might even call one of the Marquette games in the near future. <laughs> All right, the jump ball is going to be coming up. McMullen, who is 5'10", against 6'3", Dan Award. With size advantage, McMullen got up there, but Battle comes now with the rebound. Looks deep. Award's down there from five. No good. Pulling it at his Gardner, watching that baseline. Wasn't out. And O'Rourke missed the rare one that time from about five out. This is Matter on a hook shot. Andy Matter. 13 points for the big guy. The 6'7 senior center. Trying to pass it out. Young Bauer throws it out of bounds. 10-point lead for Brookfield East, and they've got the ball with 6.50 left in this game. And Hamilton has their, their fast group in there. They got Wapus in there to add uh, speed to their attack. Irv Wapus, a senior, playing his last home game as a senior here at Sussex Hamilton. He is number 20. Wapus 5'7", 135. Although uh, Coach Rich Lutka says he's the quickest guy on our team. Plays good defense. Maybe they'll try to get him to close off McMullen. Jumping it. No good by Kessenick. Ball loose. Who's got it? Young Bauer. Here come the Chargers. Man down deep. O'Rourke. Put it around. Kessenick couldn't afford to foul. He has four. And a basket by O'Rourke. He tried to draw that fifth personal on uh, Kessenick. But Kessenick wouldn't fall for it. 58. 50. Brookfield East down on the lead. They're looking deep. Taking charge. Gardner, no good. Matter trying not to foul. Who had the ball? Tobner, but a foul. It's on Gardner. He's out. Andy Gardner, you better watch out. He doesn't get called for a technical. A player can get involved in these games, and the emotions ride high all the time. But a foul by Andy Gardner, and he is out of the game. Who are they going to put in in his place? Wally Soutoff coming back in, number 35. So it will be his job to come in and do the job. John, there's the look of a dedicated young high school athlete. He knows that he has contributed, and yet he's not ready to go and sit on the bed. Although he's willing if he must. Andy and Gardner point, he must. picked up 10 points, 10 very much needed points. And it's 58-50. Let's get Terry Youngbauer. Look at him pass. Look at him shoot. And O'Rourke, <laughs> I played a little few jumping ball games with the rim for a while, but it went down. Tobner, who was fouled back in the end, is shooting the bonus. Now he will get the bonus. Try to connect on both ends here. Paul Tobner, who on the season is shooting 56% from the free throw line. And, well, he's about that right now, except he's 100% for the night. Well, John, two for two is not good. That's perfect. <laughs> I can't get it any better. 58-52 as we work it. We're under six minutes left in this game from Sussex Hamilton. John Bartell and Jim Smallins along with Terry Peterson tonight. Solon, young bar battered at the battle. Battle will have to hold up. Almost battered away. From the corner, young bar no good. With the ball is McMullen. The little sophomore guard comes down with it. Still a six-point lead for the East Spartans. Soutoff in the corner. McMullen. Woo! Can it get come alive? JC's got himself 10 points, Jim. Oh. There's O'Rourke. Boy, now they're just trading baskets one after another. 18 points now for Dan O'Rourke, 20 for Terry Ungbauer. 
And don't let anyone tell you they're not playing defense just because they're shooting. They're right on each other. Chesnick, you can't stop him. He's been playing with four fouls all half, I believe. So it's 62-54. Battle fakes once on a pass, takes it up. Working for his own rebound. Who's got it? McMullen. McMullen trying to drive on Youngbar. Double teamed. Dumped off those sound off. And what a game we're seeing again tonight. We do bring you the best here on Sports 36. Tuesday, West Dallas Central and Cudahy, who are tied for the Suburban Conference lead right now. So that's another good one coming up. Be with us 8 o'clock Tuesday night for that one. Four and a half left in this game. Brookfield East leading by a total of eight points right now. Check it. Yes, that is eight points. Get out my calculator to see if they're leading by eight points. Kessnick lived dangerously then. He challenged that ball. Pass to Soudoff. Take it away. Young Bauer after Badley got his hand on it. Young Bauer looking for the basket. Finds no Rourke. Dan O'Rourke. He's got 20. Two players with 20 now, and they are doing a job. 62-56. Don't hang up. We're going to ask you to go to the phone in a couple minutes as soon as we get a timeout. Wilcox down to Soudoff. Spins, oh. shoots, no traveling. Uh, he did. He called it. Wally Soudoff called for traveling. And Wayne Battle's coming up. Tim Battle, or Tim Patterson, is coming in to replace Wayne Battle. Whew. Let's calm down for a minute here. That young bar. There, you watch him jump for the shot, pass right up. Bank it down. Wapoos driving around, works it down. Tobner. Paul Tobner brings Sussex Hamilton back within four. Hyla, Brookfield East. John, it looks like uh, Kuhn is uh, getting ready to come back in for East at this time. Number 31, Mike Kuhn. Jim, we're coming down 335 left in the game. Brookfield East has been able to hold on, but I think the absence of Andy Gardner is starting to be felt down deep. Oh, yes. He's a second leading rebounder in there, and he's a big factor. And I'm sure that you know that at this point with three minutes left, both teams must be thinking about who's going to be number one in the conference. And they can't help but be a little nervous. I, I look for Hamilton to continue their attack. I also look for a slowdown game from East. They went into a roving slowdown game a few minutes ago. So, you're, what are you going to say? I was just going to say that we've got that phone number we like to show the folks at home, Jim. The one we show them every week. This lets us know how many people were watching. And there's that good-looking number. I don't mean the blonde right there. There's the number, 799-1102. <laughs> Got to watch it. An exciting game. We can't let the mind wander. 799-1102. Call that number before you hang up yourself tonight. That lets us know how many people we're watching. We had almost 800 people that were watching that Dominican Marquette game last week, Jim. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, that was a nice response. And it all right, it's right to us at Sports 36 at 1015 North 6th in Milwaukee. You drop us a letter, and I promise I'll answer it. That's 53203 if you're looking for the zip. On a rebound, Patterson looking down deep to Wapoos. Last touch, Brookfield East. Knocked out by Kessner. 3-13 left in this game. Brookfield East up by 4, 62-58. And this game is far from over. Tobner looking for someone to pass it to. O'Rourke, O'Rourke, no good. But who's got it? Young Bauer. Ball is loose on the floor, picked it up from there. Tries to drive. Got a pick by Tobner. Ball's loose. Wapoos. And I think he stepped on the line. Yes, he did. Referee Tom Henderson says that foot stepped over the black line at the end. Right on the baseline. And he emphasized it by smacking the floor. <laughs> How can you miss it? <laughs> McMullen trying to pass it down. Dangerous pass. As you mentioned, Kuhn is back in the lineup. Mike Kuhn, number 31 for Brookfield East. Tries to set a pick for McMullen. McMullen can't use. Kessenick. Foul coming up. It's on O'Rourke. Four for O'Rourke. And Jim with 2.43 left in this game. He cannot afford to foul out because he's their bread and butter underneath. Right. There's he, Dan O'Rourke. Yes. Uh, the only thing right at this point, he, he hasn't been shooting as consistently as before. I understand they just said it's on Wapu, so I correct myself on that. Going to the line is Dan Kesselick, number 45. Kesselick is two for two. 
Well, he's perfect so far from there. He's three for three. And in the game, 13, no, excuse me, 17 points so far. So back out to a five-point lead. Hey, Jim, coming up on April 7th, we're going to have the annual All-Star game between the North and the South teams. All the finest senior high school players in the, in the whole Southeast Wisconsin area just about. And I understand you're going to be coaching one side and Jerry Sullivan, our other regular commentator, on the other side. Yes, I'm going to take the North team. He's going to take the South. I'm hoping that young bar is going to be one of the North players. Well, he's got 22 now, Jim. He cannot be stopped in this game. Kuhn has it ripped away by O'Rourke. This is young Bowen. Got a man on the corner. Wapu is blocked. Blocked by Kuhn. That was a big block that time. McMullen down to Kessenick. We'll have to hold it up. They've got matter underneath. Nobody else under the boards, though. Now they get some men down there with the ball. Wilcox blocked. Wapoose. What is the little guys all over the court? We'll tell you more about that other game. Let's stick to this game for right now. O'Rourke driving. Half right. out of bounds. Last touch by Brookfield East. One. 53 left. A three-point lead for Brookfield East yet. It would be a big basket here for the Chargers. Oh, yeah. I'm sure the East is going to clog that middle up with their zone. Young Bauer out to Patterson. Out on the top of the key to Wapoose. Young Bauer, or Patterson now to Young Bauer. Young Bauer. Oh. He didn't want to take that one. He was forced to hold up on his shot just a moment. And Hamilton within one. Brookfield East needs a basket here, and they need it bad. They've got to get the ball over the 10-second line. Young Bauer. Nope, no basket, no basket. A foul before the basket. A Number foul 31. before the basket. Right. Number 31. That's Mike Coon. You can tell by the noise. Watch Young Bauer. There, he drives to the basket. He was fouled there. In. With all the noise, Jim, he couldn't hear it. Right. There's Coach Ludka. He looks pretty calm right now, but inside he must be going 100,000 directions. Oh, I'm telling you. You know, at this point, this is where coaches get gray hairs. One minute left one point difference you, you feel that your team can do it and yet you're not quite sure there's that shot up out there hamilton down by one and terry youngbauer will be going to the line they're in the bonus both teams in the bonus youngbauer will be shooting a one and one it's a good free throw shooter though 73.7 on the year in the 16th game this year and uh, i'll tell you if you want anybody there it would have to be either him or patterson and youngbauer's there that John, you know, at this point, uh, East does not pressure very much. You know, as soon as that ball goes out, you know Hamilton's going to put the pressure on, but East doesn't pressure. So if uh, Hamilton scores and then steals the ball, East may be in trouble. Folks, that's not dandruff on the back of those guys' warm-up jackets. That's confetti. Those East fans are having a good time here. Their team is still up by 163-62 with 126 left in this ball game. And I'll tell you, Sports 36, I don't know how we do it. Maybe we're just lucky, but we sit down and try to pick out the best games available every week. And well, every I, week, what do we do but bring you the best? Well, I tell you, Raul has a mind that can see the future. Our producer director, Raul Galvan, let's give him some credit right now. I feel like Santa Claus giving out all this credit. <laughs> Terry Youngbauer has tied up the game for the first time since the opening moments of the game. And Youngbauer with, what, about 25 points, 26 points now. Hamilton up by one with 125 left in the game. Got to get the ball down court. Down is Kessenick. They'll have to hold up. Look at the defense out there by Tobner and Youngbauer. They're all over the place. This is McMullen. East needs a big basket. No good. Tobner. Oh, when the rebound he had to be, he's done it. Timeout. Sussex Hamilton, listen to this crowd. <laughs> All right, John, who do you predict? One point difference. I bet, some, I bet someone's going to win. That's all I can say oh, right now. Yeah. Hamilton has the ball. They've got, got lead. They, they must have the momentum now, too. They've come from behind. They were down at the end of the third quarter, 54 to 46 by eight points. My statistician, Terry Peterson, tells me 
and they've come back. They've gone ahead by 164-63 with just over a minute left. They've got the ball. Will they hold on to it? Will they just have to, all they, all they have to do well, is sit on it. Well, you know, uh, one minute's a long time, really. You know, uh, I'm sure they will try to delay the game, and if the uh, layup opportunity exists, they will go ahead and take it. But they will attempt to give the illusion that they're going to hold the ball until the end of the game. I could see this little guy, Wapoose, at five foot seven, just dribbling all over the court with it. Oh, yeah, and he can do it, too. And I, what they might be smart in doing, Sussex Hamilton should let a guy who's a good free throw shooter like Youngbauer hang on to it. So if he gets fouled, he still gets to go. All right, one point lead here for Sussex Hamilton. And they have come back from the boondocks. They were never out of it. Never out of it at all. It looks the, like a, a man for man, John. Biggest lead so far tonight by Brookfield East was 10 points, but find themselves down. I don't think they've been down at all tonight. No, but here's a one-on-one, -on -one and he'll take it all the way. On Wilcox, three-point lead. Terry Youngbauer. This kid is great. This kid is great. Pass down, Matter puts it up. No good, but a foul. All right, a possibility of two free throws, not the best. I believe it's on Taubner. But that was a that was a tremendous pass on uh, that uh, McMullen made, even though he was being pressured. He saw Matter underneath the basket and gave him that ball. Fourth personal foul on Taubner, but with 54 seconds left, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Big free throw here for Andy Matter. He's got the first. Brookfield East fans, you can tell when Brookfield East scores and when Sussex Hamilton scores. This place just erupts one side than the other. It's like listening to an echo sometimes. Uh, he, he's a 62% shooter. Doesn't get this one. Who's got the rebound? It's up. Hopner! Boy, that kid is getting some important rebounds and block shots. Driving down is Patterson. 44, 43, the clock ticking. Foul. Youngbauer smacked down. He's holding his left hip and well, his thigh. That he looks, looks like okay. for Kessnick. <laughs> Five on Kessnick. But he had to go after that. There was just no way he could let that uh, Youngbauer dribble that ball. Dan Kessnick has played an excellent game. 17 points in the game for that young man. Did a good job. Now the Sussex Hamilton fans shouting that old familiar phrase, Jim. But John, you... Not to break off that subject, but let's get back to Kesnick a second. Kesnick, uh, only shooting 35% during the season. Tremendous shooting uh, exhibition tonight. He hustled in there every second. Played himself quite a tremendous game. You know, even though he's going to be sad, he really has nothing to hold his head down about. Head coach <laughs> Laverne Lubstor has had his team play a good game, but here in the final seconds, it has been all Terry Youngbauer. He has 28 points. Make it 29, looking for 30. A three-point lead. If he hits this one, it might be all over for the Spartans. Hang on. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. Brookfield East still has a chance with 39 seconds left. They've got to run the ball down. This is Wilcox. Wilcox puts it up. No good. But a, no foul. Man's loose. Patterson. Blocked. They're going to call goaltending. Patterson's shot will count. Goaltending is the call. And it's now 69-64. And I really don't see any way this, that Brookfield East could come back down five points. 69-64 with 24 seconds left. Andy Matter puts it up. Well, look out. They're back within three. A steal here. A couple steals would really help. But that's what they need. They need to come up with something over and back. Over and back called on Youngbauer. Was over the line, caught the ball, came back down. Timeout, Sussex Hamilton. Well, I don't know. Brookfield East has a chance yet now. 69-66. Taking you down to the final seconds. Jim Smallins making his way down to the floor right now. Let's tell you what's coming up. A reminder, next week, Tuesday, 8 o'clock on Sports 36. We're going to be out. John uh, Bartell, that's me. <laughs> I almost forgot my name. I didn't like them apples. I'll be out there with Jerry Sullivan at West Dallas Central as West Dallas Central High School hosts Cudahy. 
The Packers and West Dallas Central tied for the lead in the Suburban Conference. They're tied, and I'll tell you, we look for the best, and we bring you the best, as is evidence tonight. And then Saturday, next Saturday night, a week from tonight, Saturday night live. Well, it's going to be live from Homestead High School, the final game of the Homestead Girls Regional Basketball Tournament, and you're going to see some good basketball in there, let me tell you. And then March 3rd, the live final game of the West Dallas Hale Regional. This is boys basketball now, and I'm going to be there with Jerry Sullivan and Jim Smallins. Then look ahead to April 7th, as Sports 36 will come to you from Wauwatosa East High School, and uh, you're going to see two interesting coaches. Jerry Sullivan coaching the South All Senior All-Stars and Jim Smolens the North All-Stars. Driving down, McMullen puts it up, no good. Who's got it? McMullen's got to get it up. Four seconds left. They got to put it up, get a basket. They don't get it. Sussex Hamilton has just won the Braveland Conference Championship. Listen to this Sussex Hamilton play. Terry Youngbauer right in the middle of that somewhere. The Braveland Conference Championship wrapped up tonight. Brookfield East could have taken it, at least tied it up, and finished in a tie. Both teams have games left next Friday, and look who's going on the shoulders of his fans. Cutting their net down, Mr. Terry Jungbauer. What a game that guy has played. Let's try to bring you some of the totals here. Sussex Hamilton had been down by eight points at the end of the third quarter. 54 to 46. Did they come back? Did they come back? 69 to 66. You saw it for yourself. Young Bauer on one end. Tim Patterson hoisted on his fans and his classmates and his teammates' shoulders on the other end. They're cutting down the net. A sign of victory. <laughs> I wonder if he could stuff otherwise. Let's give you the scoring right now. Terry Young Bauer, the man taking down the net. There's Tim Patterson on the other end. Young Bauer, 29 points. Dan O'Rourke, 20 points. Paul Tobner, 10 points. And five points each for Wayne Battle and Tim Patterson. Jeff Kornerberg started, did not score. Irv Wapu saw some action, but did not score. For the Brookfield East Spartans, what a game they played all the way through. Had it sewn up, it looked like, going into the fourth quarter. But right when it came down to it, they couldn't quite hold on, and Sussex Hamilton came on to win. Andy Matter led the, or excuse me, Dan Kessenick led the way with 17 points before fouling out late in the fourth quarter. And the cheering goes up for Terry Youngbauer, who just has a souvenir net for himself. Andy Matter with 16, 13 for Perry Wilcox, 10 each for Andy Garner and J.C. McMullen. Coming into the game were Mike Kuhn and Wally Seldoff, but neither player scored, so five players for each team got on the scoring column here tonight. And the final score here from Sussex Hamilton, the Hamilton Chargers 69 and 66 for Brookfield East. The Braveland Conference Championship all sewn up for the Sussex Hamilton Chargers. Now 11 and 1 in the conference, 9 and 3 for Brookfield East Spartans. I'm trying to look for my counterpart, Jim Smallins, who is down on the floor. I think we're going to. Yeah, here he is. He's coming right back next to me. So I think. We can come down to him now. And Jimmy, you're down there with someone, but I can't see you, so come on in. Coach Lutka, Sussex Hamilton. You had two games with Brookville East. They won the first one, you won the second. This is the last home game for you. You introduce some of your senior players. Coach, at this time, game number two. How do you feel about it? I, I'm extremely pleased. This, this wraps up the conference title for us, and this team wasn't picked for anything. Uh, in the preseason polls, and, and they just had a lot of heart, and, and tonight they showed that they were down by 10, 58, 48, and, and they just played, and, and I can't ask more, more than that from a ball player, and I, I'm just super, and I'm really happy for the senior ball players that played their last game here. They're going to leave with a sweet memory. Coach, you had a very wonderful strategy there. You were, you were down by four at the half, down by eight at the quarter. You, you kept on them. You, you must have told them to methodically come back. Now, Coach, now that you won the conference, where are your sights? Well, right now, I'm just going to sit back and relax. <laughs> our tournament is always our second season. And, and I, like I said, I'm just so pleased about winning this that 
you, you just can't believe it, but we've got our sights set, and we're not going to try to end it here. We're going to try to continue it. Right. I, I just hope that all coaches realize that once the season is over, that's the end of that. But that tournament starts something new. Coach Wapus, your little number 20 guard, you put him in. You said before he was the fastest man on the team. He really showed it tonight. Do you have any words about uh, Wapu? Again, Irv did just a fantastic job. We decided to go man-to-man -man the last quarter, and he really pressured their guard, and I thought he made some key turnovers at that point, forced him into some key turnovers, and again, he played his little heart out. He's just a super guy. I wish he was 6'11". Well, I'll tell you, your guy, Young Bauer, mm. and that McMullen, they had mm. quite a battle there. They really mm. fought each other, played mm. well. Coach, you have a tremendous team. You stuck with your game plan, it looks like, where you're going to try to score 75 points. Well, you didn't quite make 75, but you were after it. Mm. Coach, congratulations Thank on this game. Much. Good luck to you in this tournament. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. And Coach Rich Lutka, the head coach of Sussex Hamilton, who are now the champions of the Braveland Conference. They have one game next week. They play Falls East. Brookfield East will play Waukesha North in two weeks, but they play Brookfield Central next week in that interconference rivalry. Terry Youngbauer again, 29 points in tonight's game. What a game he played. 799-1102 is the number we're going to ask you to call right now before you hang it up. There's the number, 799-1102, and get over to the pay phone, over the by the bar over there, or pick up the phone right by the TV set, but call that number and let us know that you are watching tonight. Or else, write to this address, Sports 36, Channel 36, whatever you want to do it, 1015 North 6th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53203. Write to us, let us know what you thought of the game, let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and get back to us in the future, and I'll tell you, I'll answer your letter, and I'll even... I don't know. I don't put an extra greeting in your next game for you. Next week on Sports 36 on Tuesday, the 20th of February. Live, I'm going to be out at West Dallas Central High School with Jerry Sullivan, bringing you the game which probably will decide the championship of the Suburban Conference between West Dallas Central and Cudahy. And then next Saturday night, a week from tonight, the 24th of February, live from Homestead High School, final game of the Homestead Girls Regional Basketball Tournament. And March 3rd, live, the final game of the West Allis Hale Regional Boys Tournament. And I'm going to be out there with Jim Smallins and Jerry Sullivan, and we're going to have a good old time. And we're going to see some tremendous basketball, John. Then on April 7th, Jim, that game for charity, it's going to be held at Wauwatosa East, the finest senior players in the whole southeast Wisconsin area. And you're going to be out there... Jim Smallins, uh, you're going to be coaching the boys from the north side of the... Right, uh, from Noah. And the south team will be coached by Jerry Sullivan. That game will be preceded by the finest girls, basketball players throughout southeast Wisconsin also. So be with us on April 7th for that one. Again, 799-1102. Call that number before you go to bed tonight. Just looking again, once again, at tonight's game. Terry Youngbauer with 29. Dan O'Rourke with 20. Brookfield East led by Dan Kesnick with 17. Andy Matter with 16. But the Braveland Conference Championship to Sussex Hamilton this year, 11 and 1 on the conference, 9 and 3 now for Brookfield East. What about that game, Jim? Boy, it was just a tremendous game. You know, you can't take a thing away from East. They were not expected to finish anywhere near the top. In fact, Lubsar said he would finish near the middle, but they are right there at the top. Second place, if you can't have first, there's nothing wrong with second. All right, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. I'd like to thank our statistician and scorer, Terry Peterson. Another excellent job tonight. Jim Smalls, we'll look for you in about a week or so when we get back together on some more basketball here on 36. And remember, Tuesday night, the 20th, live at West Dallas Central, and Central takes on Cudahy, what will probably be the championship of the Suburban Conference. This is John Bartell for Jim Smallins. Hey, we'll see you next week.